There he is! My favorite person on Earth! He should be the first one to see this. Ivan! Ivan, look! I did it! I passed my exams! Top of my class! Wow, that's amazing! Look at our little genius! You know, when we did algebra, I was terrified. But then I was like, it's just math. I got this. And boom! Look, I got an A. <laughs> of course you did. You are a genius. The best of all of us. <laughs> Man, I am hungry. I will sweep this side so we can go home sooner. My sister is a genius, a G, a G, genius. You are literally the worst singer ever. After that, we hurried home and searched for something to fill up our growling stomachs. Uh-oh, looks like mom left arepas in the fridge. You know I hate that. It's yucky. One, never say food is yucky. A simple, I don't like it, works best. Two, I got a bonus at work today. Come on, I will buy you a chorizo burger. Eee! Chorizo burger? Wait, but you need to save your bonus for... Forget about that. Tonight we celebrate, mi amor. Yay! Hey everyone, my name is Mirabel, and I'm from Colombia. This is my amazing brother Ivan. Together, we're the greatest team ever. Our mom worked long hours as the mayor's clerk for barely enough money. And even though my brother helped with the money he made from menial jobs around the town, we never had enough. But Ivan was full of ideas to help us forget what we lacked. <sighs> I am so cold. <sighs> Our radiator is broken. Mom called and it's too expensive to repair it. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. But if I pay for this, I don't know if we will have enough to eat. It's okay, Mom. I have an idea. Let's move all our beds to the kitchen and use the stove to stay warm. Mirabel, you always wanted to go camping, right? Today, we're going camping in the kitchen. Awesome! He always knows how to turn things around like that. Even though our living conditions aren't all too great, but with Ivan around, it felt like nothing could go wrong. Until... Mira, the most exciting thing happened today. So while I was sweeping the streets in the city, this man in a suit came to me, and long story short, he wants to take me to be a model in America. What? America? That's so far away, Ivan. I know, but I'm going to be a model, and that means I'm going to be traveling all over the world. I am going to be like a bird, and after a while, I will take you guys to America as well. I'm happy for you, but I don't know what I would do without you. Oh, come on, genius. You can write me every Every week, and when I've earned enough, I will buy you a phone so we can video call all the time. You promise? I swear it on my life. I even left home a few weeks later, and from that day, life sucked. There was no one waiting for me at home after school every day. Mom had to start working even harder, and I was lonely and miserable. Every Saturday, I walked for 30 minutes to the post office, hoping to get letters from Ivan. No letters yet, dear. I have told you, you don't need to walk here every week. Once you have a letter, I will rush on my bicycle to deliver it. What if you forget? Or you have so much work and you don't get to me in time? Don't worry, I like walking here. Walking is healthy. <sighs> okay, we have a rusty old bicycle in the back. You can have it for your trips here. No one uses it. Please don't say no. It hurts me to see you make this tedious trip every week. Thank you so much, sir. That is so kind. I promise one day I will repay your kindness. <laughs> I know you will. I excitedly went to get the bike. This probably was the first time I felt happy about something after Ivan left. I was pedaling while humming my favorite song when I bumped into a rock which made me lose balance and head straight to the sidewalk. Oh my god, I am so sorry. It's been a long time since I rode a bicycle. A bicycle? You call this death trap a bicycle? Now I have to get a tetanus shot because that filthy thing touched me. I am sorry. Yes, the bike is dirty, but I don't think you will get any diseases. And and I am supposed to take your word for it? Do you even know what a tetanus shot is? Listen, boy, I have said I am sorry, and I don't know what else you want from me. I am very sorry. Goodbye. How dare you? Come back here. With my new bike, I dropped by the post office more often, but life didn't get any better, as there was still no word from Ivan. And later that summer, I graduated high school. I knew my mom couldn't afford college, so I got a job helping the postman deliver his mail. One day, I had to deliver mail to the Santiago's. They were the most powerful family in our town. Their house was a castle. My heart was tumbling in my chest as I placed the mail in their mailbox. As I turned to leave, I heard a voice from the hedges. I looked over and saw the devil boy. Hey, you! Aren't you the girl that hit me the other day? Why are you here? Security? Whoa, whoa, wait. I'm just doing my job. I didn't bother you one bit. Job? Oh, with that dead trap. I can't just let you go off and hurt another 
another innocent person. Get over here and directly hand me my mail. I was confused, but hey, it's the Santiago's. I better do what any of them say. So I stepped into their yard and met this smug Diego. But that's not all. After that, he still wouldn't let me leave. That whole afternoon, he made me judge his paintings, give him recommendations for dinner, pick a name for his new pet, etc. Weird stuff. Guess rich people just get lonely sometimes. <laughs> and that went on every single day after. Gosh, why do the Santiago's have so many males? And every time I got to their mansion, Diego was already there by the gate waiting and bombarded me with a thousand silly side quests. He even followed me on my mail delivery. What are you doing? Too rich you don't know how to spend money and time? Well, don't you see? I'm spending them all on you. Haha, <laughs> right, I'm flattered. Seriously, do you really think our family has that many mails every day? It's all my love letters to bring you to me. Then suddenly, he leaned in for a kiss, but I dodge it. Why? You don't like me? People like me don't get to like people like you. Your parents would destroy my life if we're a thing. Look at me. I will never let any harm come to you. You are the only joy in my day. The love of my life. I need you. Just trust me. Okay. And just like that, we started dating. I didn't think of him this way at first, but I guess his sincerity had gotten to me. He's always around. He gave me all the caring and attention I haven't had in a while, which made me feel like I wasn't alone anymore and I could get through everything, thanks to our love. One day, I came home after a long day and I found my mom outside. Everything we owned was littered on the streets. Mom, what happened? What's going on? I don't know. I just got here and I found these men here moving our things. I tried to speak to them and they pushed me down. As we spoke, a flashy car pulled up right in front of us. So, this is the girl you have been wasting your time with? Look at her, filthy, poor home. You are a disgrace and a disappointment, Diego. Diego, what is going on? <laughs> Dad, you can't interfere in my life like this. Fine then, make your decision. Break up with her or I'll disown you. Not even one dime to your inheritance. Daddy, that's not a funny joke. We will sort this out. Um, Mirabelle, I was just bored and you're just a gold digger. We both know that, so... What? You promised to protect me! I'm sorry, sweetie. Don't listen to that. I'll explain tomorrow, okay? Then he quickly got in the car and they drove away. I tried to contact him first thing in the morning, but to no avail. I sneaked up to his house, but only to hear the maids saying he's already long gone to some European dreamland, continuing his lavish life among lavish people as his dad wished. So, my so-called loving boyfriend has left me for his dad's money. But without so much of a proper breakup, while his family is destroying my life, getting us kicked out of our own house, and even getting my mom fired from her job, I felt like breaking down. I've lost everything. This life was just out to get me and I wanted to give up. But looking at mom, I couldn't bring myself to do so. I wish Ivan was here. He would know how to fix this, as he would never give up. That's right. I was raised by my wonderful brother, and maybe it's time for me to channel his strength and fill his shoes, keeping this family alive and well until he's back. So, swiping the pain aside, my mother and I gathered what we could and we left town because we knew the Santiago's would never let us have peace. We went to live with an aunt, mom got another job, and I started working as the judge's assistant at the local court to support her. One day, I was at work scheduling meetings when I heard a voice that left me shell-shocked. Excuse me, is the judge available to meet me? Ivan? Mira, it's really you. Oh, I've been looking for you. You left us. I waited for you. We waited for you for two years. I am sorry, Mita. I tried to reach you, but America was hell. There was no modeling contract. I got there and I was worked like a horse. My boss prevented me from writing letters to you guys. When I could finally write home, I never got any response. I thought something had happened to you guys. So I came home three months ago and I have been searching for you guys since. Mita, life has been hard for me and I thought I lost you guys too. I am so sorry. Sorry, you are home now. Ivan being back brought joy into our lives again, but he was very sad. He wasn't the Ivan I knew. All he did was sleep and being all depressed, and it broke my heart to see him that way. Ivan, you need to snap out of it. What am I supposed to do now? Go back to sweeping the streets or go back to America and start from zero? How do I know things would be different now? I have learned that if you want to make something happen, you have to do it yourself. Ivan, we are going to America. I was saving my salary to get a college degree, but we are going to use it to go to America. You are right. There is nothing for you here, and it's going to be different this time because you are going to have us. But what about you? You are supposed to go to college. Yes, but you are forgetting that 
I am a genius. I will always find a way to make it work. Okay, let's do it. America was different. Ivan actually got a modeling gig this time. And in six months, we were comfortable enough that my mom didn't need to work long hours. Everything was looking up. I applied for a national scholarship, which I won, and I got to go to law school. I graduated top of my class. And I can never forget the joy on my mother's and brother's faces when I read my valedictorian speech on graduation day. Ma'am, there is a client insisting on seeing you. I can't take any more cases, and I have to go to court in an hour. He is insisting, Ma. Fine, send him in. Mira, is it really you? Oh my god, I saw on the TV that big case you won, and I knew I had to come see you. Diego? Hello, how can I help you? Wow, you are even more beautiful than I remember. I remember? Let me stop you there. I don't have time to reminisce on the worst times of my life. Be quick. What do you want? Um, Mirabel, you know I had to do what my dad wanted. He was going to disinherit me. I didn't want to hurt you. What do you want? Okay, um, my company, we are having an issue with taxes, and we need a good lawyer. Everyone is recommending you as the best in town. Please help me, for the old time's sake. Ha! <laughs> sake? I'd spit on that sake. You are delusional if you think I would ever help you. I hope your company burns. It's been nice chatting with you, but I have to head to court. My fiancé is waiting downstairs. Goodbye, Diego. I hope I never see you again. Wow! This place was like a life-size dollhouse. It was huge and... Whoa! Was that a whirlpool bath? I was in heaven. <laughs> Slow down, dear. OMG, you even have an indoor badminton court? I love badminton. This was the most amazing house ever. Hey, I'm Helen, and I grew up in a normal house with a normal family. I love my parents, and life was great and all, but the one downside was the long journey to my new high school. My mom, Grace, said she had the answer to this and suggested I go and stay with my Aunt Lucy as she lived closer to the school. Okay, so I never met Lucy before. Actually, until Mom mentioned her, I didn't even know I had an aunt. Mom explained that Aunt Lucy moved to Canada for business and had only returned to the U.S. recently. This was the first time I had to live so far away from my parents, so I was kind of worried I'd get homesick. But one advantage was my bestie, Madeline, lived right nearby. Awesome, right? Besides, this place was dope. I couldn't stop gawking at that badminton court. Seriously, it was bigger than my house. Aunt Lucy, I guess you must really like badminton. Yes, many people think it's just a backyard game, but it's a true sport to me. Wow, it was a rarity to meet someone with the same taste as me. We chatted for ages about our interests. Lucy was so easy to talk to, and I honestly felt like I'd known her for years. I would love to become a pro badminton player, but mom thinks I should keep it as a hobby and find a more stable career. I see, but don't let others discourage you. The true passion is worth pursuing. Let me arrange a training schedule for you. Now, try this. Oh, how do you know I like lobster linguine? At first, living with Lucy was like being in a dream world. She pampered me, bought me clothes I wanted, and cooked the most delicious dishes. But beneath the shine, there was also a darker side. Lucy was super strict. I mean, major general level strict. I had to wake up at 5 a.m. each morning for training, run laps of it for an hour, and hit 50 shuttlecocks over the net in a row. If I missed one, I had to start over again. Meanwhile, I still had to keep up with my homework, and I couldn't go and meet my friends on the weekend or do anything without asking Lucy for permission first. Ugh. At least at school, I could vent to Maddie about it. I expected her to agree with me, but she shrugged and said, I guess your aunt just wants the best for you. Besides, your badminton skills have improved loads. If I could live in a luxurious house, eat delicious food with such a caring aunt, I'd so put up with a grueling training schedule. Yeah, I guess she's right. Maybe I should be more grateful. Of course, on finding out about the school badminton club, I immediately signed up for it. I was walking over to the court, swinging my racket about and ready to show off my skills when these two guys approached me. Go back to the cheerleading team where you belong, sweetie. Leave the court for the real pros. How dare these idiots judge me like this? They hadn't even seen me play. Oh yeah? I challenge you to a game. Then we'll see who's serious. We're the best players in the school. Just so you know, pick one. Suddenly, another guy appeared next to me and said, then let's play doubles. Oh my god, he's Tyler, the best badminton player in the whole school. 
I've heard all about his reputation and seen photos of him with a trophy in the school newsletter, but I've never met him before. Surprisingly, he's even cuter in person. Pfft, you can defeat us in singles, but can you cover that useless girl in a duo match? That's it. Scoot over. Let me show you what this useless girl can do. The game started and instantly... Tyler and I vibed on the court and were hitting the shuttlecocks at lightning speed. We won in straight sets, and those losers looked so bummed out. <laughs> Tyler seemed super impressed. And then... Good game, Helen. Do you want to hang out again? How about tomorrow? We could go get some food. Mamma mia! How can I say no to that? But when I told Aunt Lucy, she didn't take it so well. Love may seem appealing, but it's a waste of time and energy that will lead to a decline in your badminton abilities. Your grades, your mood, everything. You're too immature to deal with those type of emotions right now. This was ridiculous. I wasn't a little kid. I was perfectly capable of making my own decisions and following my own feelings. He's a sweet guy who helped me out. Of course he did. All guys appear nice at first. Maybe if you just gave him a chance. Wake up, Helen, and stop yourself from throwing away your dreams for some boy. Ugh, it was no use. My aunt was too stubborn to listen. I stormed up to my room, feeling frustrated. No way was I letting my aunt's strictness ruin things with my dream guy. So I decided to sneak out to meet Tyler. But how? Ah, I know exactly the person who can help. Matt's red code. Aunt Lucy won't let me see Tyler. Please help me distract her. Okay, but only if you get me a signed copy of the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Easy peasy. After that day, I was able to go on multiple dates with Tyler, all thanks to Maddie's help. She always came up with the most convincing excuses, like I was going to her house for group study or we were going to a super important event. Then one time when I was supposed to study at home, it was actually Maddie pretending to be me. Later, I sneak back into my room, all giddy. You wouldn't believe how great our date was today. But Maddie just gave this awkward look. What's up? Did my aunt suspect something? N no, everything's fine. Then she immediately climbed out of the window. Hmm, strange. But the next day she acted like nothing had happened. So I let it slide. She must have just felt unwell or something. Meanwhile, things with Tyler were getting better and better. After a romantic date, we walked home, and suddenly Tyler stopped me, looking all shy and nervous. Helen, I, I really like you, and I like spending time with you. Be my girlfriend, will you? OMG, this was the best thing that had ever happened to me. I flung my arms around him and yelled out of my lungs, yes! When I finally let go of him, out of nowhere, a kid on roller skates bumped into me and sent me tumbling into the road. A car zoomed toward me, and before I could process anything, Tyler sprinted forward and pushed me away. When I opened my eyes, he was lying there unconscious. I panically called an ambulance and went with him to the hospital. As I sat in the waiting room with floods of tears, I was so scared and didn't know what to do that I ended up calling Aunt Lucy. Only a few minutes later, I saw her hurrying toward me, looking dead serious. Helen, what have I told you? You lied to me to hang out with a boy? I had no heart to argue about that and immediately burst into a fresh bout of tears. It's my fault. Tyler risked his life to save me and now he's hurt. Aunt Lucy's demeanor softened and she pulled me in closer. After a while of consoling me, she finally opened up and shared a story I didn't expect. Actually, I fell in love when I was around your age, but he betrayed me. I just don't want you to be hurt like that. Oh, that's terrible. But Tyler is a good guy. I just know he is. He saved me. And for that, I'm truly grateful. Okay, I'll trust your judgment and give you my blessing to get to know him further. Thank you. Right then, the doctor appeared and told us that Tyler was all right and he would make a full recovery in a few days. Thank goodness. When Tyler was back, Aunt Lucy stuck to her word and gave me and him a chance together. She even offered to give both of us a badminton lesson. Brace yourself for the craziest training routine ever. But practicing with Tyler made it actually bearable and a lot more fun. I had a big competition coming up, which could get me the professional player title and a chance to join the national team if I won. So I needed all the training I could get. Just one more step away from my greatest dream. Also, I couldn't contain my smile when seeing Lucy gradually warmed up to Tyler. My big day finally came. Mom and Dad were here to support me as well. I excitedly got ready, but when I opened the kit bag... What happened? Oh no! Who's destroyed our babies? I... I think Lucy might have done it. 
Why on earth would she do that? I overheard her saying that she was only pretending to like Tyler so she could keep an eye on you both. What? I honestly believe that Aunt Lucy was actually giving Tyler a chance. But it still didn't make any sense. Even if Lucy hated Tyler, why would she try to ruin this competition? She knew how much it meant to me. There's one more thing, but I don't think you're ready to hear it. Gosh, just spill the beans, Maddie. Actually, the day I disguised as you, I found something out. Lucy's not your aunt. She's your mom. She wants to take you back to Canada with her, and she knows if you won this contest, then you'd never want to leave. I stood there in complete shock. So, my beloved family I'd known all these years wasn't actually mine? And Lucy, how come she had the brazenness to show up now as my real mother and wanted to take me back? I felt like my whole life had been one big lie and immediately rushed to find Lucy. Is it true? You're my real mom? How did you know? I can't believe you did that to me! You're selfish, terrible, and ruined everything! Go away! I don't want to see you anymore! I don't have a mom like you! Grace is my one and only mother! Lucy looked completely broken, then quietly left. I was shaking in anger and pain when a gentle hand laid on my shoulder. Helen, sweetie, I know it's hard to take it in. Trust me, this was difficult for us all. You all lied to me! How could you just agree to send me off to her? You never consider me as your real daughter, do you? Don't think silly, honey. We love you so much and never want to let you go. Unless it's better for you. Then mom told me how Lucy came and persuaded her. Turned out, Lucy had a very tragic past. Since childhood, she'd always been the black sheep in her family. They treated her poorly and despised her badminton passion. Then when she told them she was pregnant, they threw her out. And her boyfriend also ditched her right after that. So she had no choice but to leave me at the orphanage and begin a new life in Canada. After countless hardships, she finally became successful. And all she desired was to reconnect with me. I believe everyone deserves a second chance. That's why I let you two live together for a while. Only if you're happy, I would tell you the truth, so you wouldn't be too shocked. Besides, she can help you more than me now. Hey, you even inherited her badminton spirit. I was stunned for a while. It's true that Lucy left me, but that's because she didn't want me to suffer with her. And I indeed had a happy life. I shouldn't be so rude to her. But it was still a lot to digest, so I went home with mom. I shut myself away until the next day. Tyler came and tried to convince my gloomy self to go for a walk. I know that's a lot, but I think you should make up with Lucy. Why are you still on her side? She only pretended to be nice to you, and she ruined the contest just to take me away from this perfect life. We can find our chance in plenty of other competitions, but there's only one Lucy. She's your biological mother, and it's fine to be mad with her, but you should never reject her. My mind wandered back to all the happy moments I'd had with Lucy, our interesting chat, the delicious meals she cooked, and the times we played badminton together. She even had a special room to store badminton equipment, especially the rackets. Wait, Lucy treasured badminton rackets. If she simply wanted to stop us from competing in the contest, then she could have just hidden our rackets or pretended that the car broke down. But she would never destroy the rackets like that. Ty, do you remember who else handled our rackets that day? I'm not sure. I, um, oh, I think Madeline had them at some point. So, could it be Maddie? But why? She had no reason to do that. She was my best friend and always supported me to play badminton. I stormed over to Maddie's house, but she's arguing with her dad on the doorstep. You useless, pathetic rascal. Go then. I don't care. Maddie ran off in tears, and I followed her to an alley. Seeing her like that made some of my anger toward her fade. Hey, what's going on? Maddie seemed surprised to see me. She tried to dodge some of my questions at first, but seeing nowhere to hide, she finally confessed. My mom left me to that alcoholic dad who does nothing but shout at me all day. You have two moms who love you, and I I don't even have one. I was angry at Lucy because, to me, all of the moms who gave up their child are heartless and deserve no forgiveness. She even wanted to take you to Canada. I couldn't lose you, too. The fear and jealousy got the better of me, so I broke your rackets, then blamed Lucy. I'm so sorry. This sounds tough, but you still shouldn't have done it. I'm always here to listen to you, and I'm not moving anywhere. You're stuck with me. 
When Maddie felt better, I took her to my home and intended to find Lucy to apologize for everything. But mom said Lucy had decided to go back to Canada and was on her way to the airport. I immediately hailed a cab to the airport, then ran through departures, desperately trying to find Lucy. I was starting to think I was too late, when suddenly I spotted her about to walk through towards security. Lucy! Mom, please don't go! I, I thought you don't want me. No, I was just confused and angry and I'm sorry that I hurt you. We finally sorted things out and agreed to give each other a chance to start over. So what happened next? Well, Lucy decided to expand her business to the U.S. so she could stay here with me. My wonderful adoptive parents took Maddie in after helping her get away from her toxic father. So now I have two amazing moms, an awesome sister, and yes, you know it, a super cute, thoughtful boyfriend. When I was figuring out what to do next, someone passed by. He was tall and handsome, just like a male character walking straight out of a Japanese manga. But why does it have to be in this embarrassing situation? After what feels like an eternity of bombastic side eyes, he finally got close to me, opened his bag, and pulled out an old pair of shoes. I was dreaming about how he would help me put them on, like in the movies when he coldly tossed the shoes next to me. That should do. Then he just left. Hey, you! Can't you at least help me get out of this? The guy sighed, then turned around to help me. Do you even know who I am? Of course I do, your highness. What's with that attitude of yours? The royal family never cared to visit this poor village. Why is your highness troubling herself here? Is that so? Well, if that's the case, I want you to show me around so I know how my people are doing. Stranger. The guy seemed surprised at my request, but then put on the sweetest smile. My name's Will, and of course I can give you a tour. Holy mother of God. If his judgy look was enough to make you question your self-worth, his smile could make you feel like you're the luckiest girl in the world. But before you can wander around, you need to blend in first. People here don't really like the members of the royalty. Then he gave me some old clothes from his bag. You can go in there. What? Do I look like I belong in there? No one's gonna judge you. Except some chickens, maybe. Hey, I can behead you in one second. I'm just kidding. You're safe in there. This was really the middle of the cornfield. So I had to go in and got changed quick. This Will guy's better not be fooling around. And he did not. He walked me around and told me about the lives of the villagers here. I was shocked to see the houses in such poor conditions. How come I only see women and children here? Where are all the men? Young people, especially men, all went away trying to find jobs. <sighs> the living conditions here are hard. I see. But then, who helps take care of the kids and the elderly? We're all just a big family, so everyone kind of counts on each other to make it through. And you're the only guy around? Actually, I was going to leave too, but then I just didn't have the heart to, so I decided to stay here to take care of everyone. I was shocked to learn about everything. All this time while I was sheltered in my gated castle, attending useless events at the lodge in name of charity, people out here have been struggling. And this guy, Will, has done more for others than I ever did. I was wrong about him. Right then, a piercing voice came shaking the earth beneath my feet. Your Highness! What do you think you're doing? Oh my god, what kind of rocks are you dressed in? Are you trying to harm the princess? Guards, restrain him! No, 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 Grace, I'm fine! Look! The guards finally let go of Will. You can't be out here, princess. You have to return to the lodge ASAP before word gets out. Next thing I knew, I was escorted away. Thank you! I'll return the shoes to you! Man, Grace is always a party pooper. As soon as we got back to the lodge, Grace instantly turned into a talking machine, going on and on about how dangerous it was, how reckless I was. But you know, one of my greatest strengths is selective listening. So I take what she said with a spoon of salt. I mean, a grain of salt. <laughs> <sighs> Everything I just said to you goes in one ear and out the other, doesn't it? Yep, you got that right. <laughs> anyway, I had this idea while cruising around the village. I want to help better the lives of the people there. What else, princess? I'm serious. It's like I finally found my life's purpose as a princess all these years. <sighs> Just don't get yourself into trouble is all I'm asking for. You got it. <laughs> that night, I racked my brain trying to think about how I could help the villagers. Aha! Uh -huh. I'll give them the nicest things in the world, just like how the fairy godmother helped Cinderella. So the next day, I ordered my servants to pack boxes of gifts to deliver to Will and the other villagers. If you could have anything from the royal family, what would you want? 
I'm so sorry, Princess. I don't know what I did wrong. Please don't fire me. Chill out. You're not fired. Just answer me. I, I don't know. Maybe expensive clothes made out of cashmere or mulberry silk would be nice. Right. Pack all the royal gowns then. From blueberry silk, of course. Princess, it it's mulberry. Yeah, that. What else? Ah, get all my tiaras too. But that's your tiaras, princess. Nah, I never wear them anyway. Oh, don't forget some royal tableware and tea sets too. I want my people to have the most enjoyable dining experience. After having the gifts sent over, I also gave the order to build a tea house in the village where people could read and have a cup of tea together. <sighs> it feels so nice to finally be able to do some real charity. In the days following, I still had to resume my charity duties at the lodge, namely helping out with the laundry. But of course, it was just for photos. Feeling exhausted, I decided to get a massage with Liam and Grace afterwards. But who knows, it would tickle so much. <laughs> it's like a thousand feathers poking at my souls. <laughs> Your Highness, are you okay? Looks like you're dying over there. <laughs> Help! <laughs> <laughs> Strangely, after the massage disaster, it was like something clicked among the three of us. We would hang out together and our favorite thing to do was spilling the tea about the royal family. Well, not literally. The queen mustn't know about this. Nah, it's fine. The queen always acts tough and strict, but did you guys know that she's actually scared of the microwave? <laughs> Your Highness! I heard some other rumors on the streets, too. A royal member once snatched a scar from a woman and never gave it back, just because they liked it so much. Oh, I bet it's Princess Aurora. She's crazy about fashion and all that nonsense. We never get along, though. But just when a maid was putting down a spoon next to me, the butler suddenly flew off the handle. This is the dessert spoon, and that is the teaspoon. How could you not know this? I'm... I'm terribly sorry, Princess. Uh, oh! It's just a spoon. You're excused. Don't worry about it. Agreed. We don't care about those stupid rules. Now, if you could leave us alone. They finally left. Ugh. I wonder if these people ever got bored of themselves being boring. Even though I had fun with Grace and Liam for the past couple of days, I've been longing to get out of the lodge again and explore the grounds. So one time, while Grace was back at the palace running some errands, I immediately took my golden opportunity. I was so excited to see how my people were doing with all the nice things I've sent to them. Oh, I bet they're looking as elegant as the royal family now. Maybe they're busy riding the horses I sent. Oh, actually, they might even be having a tea party now. I can't wait to join them. But when I got there... The village looks the same. And is that the Sovereign's orb they're playing with? No, 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 that's not a toy, and you're holding it upside down. That's when I turned to see by the river, the woman pounding on the cloves with golden golf clubs from the late king. Just when I was heading towards them, I caught sight of the tea house, full of pigs, horses, and chickens inside. Did they seriously turn my elegant tea house into a barn? I guess animals are having a grand tea party in there. Right then, some woman passing by noticed me. Is that the princess? I can't believe she still has the audacity to show up here. I thought she was different, but she's just like the rest of the royal family. A bunch of useless, ignorant snobs. They don't even know what we need. What's all the use in these luxuries when we can't even afford basic necessities? I felt like reality had smacked me in the face for the first time in my life. Turned out I wasn't helping them at all. Just then, I saw Will nearby. But upon seeing me, he just sighed and turned away to leave. Trust me, all I wanted was to help out. But I just don't know how. You should just go back to your lodge, princess. No, no, no. Let me stay here and live with everyone to understand what my people are going through. That's not possible. You grew up with abundance and wouldn't last a day here. That's why I want to learn so I could really be helpful and give everyone what they need. Please help me, Will. He still seemed hesitant. Just treat me like everyone else here. I promise I'll try my best. Will seemed surprised at how determined I was, and he agreed to give me a chance. I was over the moon and ready to start a new venture. But when I got back to the lodge to pack my things, I was informed that the charity program was over and all of us were to return to the palace the next day. I had to go find Liam. Seeing him reading in the garden, I told him I had some emergency that needed my attention here and asked if he could help cover up for me. I was ready to get on my knees if I needed to when... Sure thing. Just do whatever you need to. But aren't you mad? I know I was supposed to be spending time with you just as the queen wanted me to. You know, the marriage and stuff. Girl, I got your back. Saying that, he got on the phone with my mom. Your Majesty, the princess and I are enjoying our time together so much and wish to be allowed to extend our stays here. 
And of course, the queen was more than happy to agree. But I knew there was one more obstacle to overcome. Grace! When I told her I needed to live outside the lodge for a while, she immediately opposed the idea. I'm serious, Grace. I know you worry about me, but I am the princess. I'm supposed to help the very people I rule, but I failed to do that so far. And I'm here enjoying my privileges on my people's hard work. What kind of princess am I? Plus, Liam and I don't have feelings for each other anyway. Grace, you gotta help me. After long hours of arguing, Grace finally caved. I was so ecstatic that I jumped over to hug her. Giddy up! Only, life in the village was slightly different from the palace. People here actually grow their own food. Doesn't everyone's food come from the store? <laughs> no, we don't have stores here. Everything comes from the ground. Even my afternoon chocolate shake with two pumps of mocha? Yes, even your chocolate shake with two pumps of mocha. <laughs> in fact, I bet it's even better. I'll make one for you later. Just then, I saw Mrs. Stell struggling to pluck up the carrots, so I came over to help her. Don't you worry, I got this. But, uh, uh, who knew the carrot was holding on to dear ground? Just when I was about to give up, it suddenly came off the ground and ended up flying straight over my head, hitting, well... Um, maybe it's better you go feed the chicken. But when I approached the chicken, I saw an egg on the ground, so I picked it up. The chicken suddenly turned to look at me as if they all spotted their sworn enemy. All that was left to do was run! Not until Will came in and saved the day did all the chickens calm themselves down. You seem to know a lot about life here. Of course, I've lived here since the day I was born, though I don't really know who my parents are. Where are your parents? I'm actually an orphan, being brought up by the people here. They didn't have much, but were raising me with all their hearts. That's why I want to stay here and take care of them now that they're getting older. I was touched by his story and realized how nice people could be to each other, against all odds. Let's go fix the roofs. The storm's coming. Is there something you can't do, Mr. Know-it-all? Well, actually, yes. I've been living here for so long, I don't know how to... How to impress a girl. <laughs> Who are you kidding? I bet girls are dying to sweep you off your feet already. Are you? For a second, I found myself lost in the dreamy haze of his eyes. No, no, Mia, you're here to help others, not to fool around. Come on, let's go fix the roofs. Later that day, Will led me to the garden and showed me the traditional way of making chocolate. And just like this, you keep grinding until it becomes a thick paste. I got to try it with Will holding my hand. The two of us were so close together. I could hear my heart pounding against my chest. Is this the rush they all talked about in the fairy tales? When we finished, Will made a fresh batch of hot chocolate and gave me one. When I took a sip, a rich, nutty, and earthy flavor instantly warmed me up inside. Will was right. This is better than any Starbucks I ever had. The following days were the most fun I've had in my entire life. I still found it hard to navigate through the hardships here. But Will was always by my side. And the people here, once I got to know them better, they all started to warm up to me too. Every Friday, the whole village would gather around a bonfire to tell each other the oldest tales. Enough with the nightingale. I want to know when we'll hear the happy ending for the tale of Mir and Will. <laughs> We all know the happy ending is as clear as day already. <laughs> I found my cheeks warming up to the jokes. I wondered what was on his mind as I caught Will blushing also. Everything was like a dream, until one morning Will and the other villagers had to go harvest the crop, and I stayed home to help with some chores. While I was hanging the clothes, I got all shook up by a familiar voice. What do you think you're doing, Mia? I was taking Mom to the hospital, when noticed the nurse was trying to hurt her. Excuse me, miss. You're making a mistake. That syringe should go into the brachial artery. You're in the wrong location, and that's dangerous. Are you trying to tell me that I don't know how to do my job? I have been doing this job longer than you have been alive. No! You're going to hurt my mother! Bummy, be quiet. Stop disrespecting and let the nurse do her job. No! No, don't touch her! What is going on here? Your nurse got the location of the brachial artery wrong, and I was trying to correct her, but she wouldn't listen. I'm sorry, she reads a lot of books, and she is convinced she knows as much as a doctor. But she is correct, the nurse is wrong. Ma'am, your daughter just saved your life. Hello, my name is Bummy, from Nigeria. And I am just 15, but I'm already the world's youngest doctor. And today, I will tell you about my crazy adventure. Before that, please like and subscribe. It all started when I was little. My mom used to take me to the library where she worked and leave me to wander around. That's when I found my interest in medicine. By the time I was six, I knew everything about the human body. But it only started to bloom when I met Dr. Jeff the other day. 
He told me I had a photographic memory and encouraged me to pursue medicine. While my classmates struggled to understand fractions, I had already figured out algebraic equations. School became boring, so after school, every day, I would go to Dr. Jeff's hospital, and he would let me observe everything and instructed me to perform some procedures from simple to more complex. Bummy, you've learned too fast. I hope someday you have a chance to spread your wings further, because soon I'll have nothing else to teach you. Then, one day, I was sitting on the porch to finish my medical illustration when I noticed a group of foreigners approaching. Turns out they are American aid workers who would be staying in our neighborhood for a while with some humanitarian projects. Days after, they were carrying out an immunization exercise. Everything was going great when suddenly one of them fell to the ground. I ran to the scene as fast as I could to see him choking. Blood was nearly drained from his face. Without thinking further, I ran back into my house and grabbed my aid kit, but was blocked by some woman. Kid, go play somewhere else. Don't take off oxygen here. Someone's choking. Do you want me to help your friend or not? Upon that, I immediately dunked the Swiss knife in alcohol to sterilize them, made an incision, and then placed the straw as a temporary breathing tube. The man who was almost turning blue took his first breath. Let's get him to the hospital. It's not far from here. I called Dr. Jeff to inform his situation, and a few days later, the man finally woke up. That night, someone knocked on my door, and I was surprised to see the woman that day. Hello, I'm Carol. Sorry to disturb you, but I came to talk about your daughter. I have traveled far and wide, but in my life, I have never met a genius like her. I think that an American education will do so much for her. America? My sweet child was fine here. No offense, though, but I'm afraid a life here is not the ideal environment for her to develop. But America will. We can get her into a gifted program and make sure she reaches her full potential. But who is going to take care of her? She would live with me. I promise I would take care of her like my own daughter. And the next time you see Bummy, she will have become the extraordinary doctor she was meant to be. What do you say, baby? I didn't like the idea of leaving my mom alone here. But that's when what Dr. Jaff said earlier echoed in my mind. Right, that might be a chance that he meant. Mom, I want to go. The goodbyes were quick, and I was on the plane heading to California with an eager heart toward the new land of dreams ahead. Welcome to America. Please feel at home. Oh God, my phone has been buzzing since they talked about you on Facebook. Hang on, I need to take this call. You must be bummy, right? So you're the girl our mom can't shut up about. Hi, nice to meet you. You are not welcome here. What? Oh, great! You have met my kids, Camille and Ted. Welcome home, Mom. I made dinner. I hoped we could sit, and you can tell us all about your tri- Oh, not today, sweet pea. A show wants an exclusive on you right now, bummy. N now But I just- That means people are super excited about you. Come on, let's go. Then Carol took me somewhere else with a bunch of strangers holding some kind of lights that blinded my eyes. Suddenly, a man walked toward me. You're a bummy, right? Hi, I'm Martin. Can we start now? Start what? Without letting me catch up on what's going on, Carol already had me chained into stiff clothes and pushed me into a chair opposite the man. Good morning, everyone. Our show today has a special guest, Bummy Alana, the youngest doctor from Nigeria. Or maybe the world. Bummy, why don't you start by telling us your first case? Uh, um, hi. When I was six... My friend was choking on a bone, so I performed the Heimlich maneuver as I read it in a book before. And the show continued with loads of questions about me. I answered them all, but to be honest, I don't know why I was doing what here. I felt such a relief when it ended. But the next morning... Oh, there you are! Rise and shine, my little genius! We have a busy day today! I laid out your clothes, so get ready! We leave in one hour! I thought it was a one-time thing. It rather turned into it my daily routine. I would be in a show after a show, sitting in front of cameras answering ridiculous questions. I felt like I was making a fool of myself. Carol, I'm tired of the cameras and the interviews. I came here to learn. Oh, darling, we want the same thing. A medical university you need to be at is expensive, and these interviews would help us get a sponsor soon, I believe. In the meantime, just focus on that and your study at school, okay? Yeah. I had to enroll at a public high school with her children. But high school here was weird. In Nigeria, I was supposed to be entering 11th grade. But now in America, I had to enroll in the 9th. It's like I was left behind. Not just that, Camille, Carol's daughter, seemed to not like me and was determined to make my life a living hell. She usually hid my textbooks or my shoes before school, making me search everywhere and I ended up being late for school almost every day. Bummy, I don't think you appeared on TV shows that you can discard school regulations. Ugh, it's her, not me! And everything got worse. The people at school continued to undermine me and act like I was a dummy. 
Excuse me, sir. I got a C minus, even though I got all the questions right. Well, you didn't use the words from the textbook like I asked. But I'm correct. Shouldn't I be allowed to express my answers in my own words? Not in my class. Genius, they say. That day after school, I was home to find all of my clothes all torn apart. That's when I saw Camille smirk. You ruined my clothes! Next time, your clothes won't be the only damaged things if you stay here. Okay, fine. That's the last straw. It's time to teach her that I'm not an easy prey for her. I snuck into her room to mess with her makeup products. Ha! Huh, let's see how you can decorate your face to school. But on the way out, I noticed her iPad. Wow, she had a channel herself. And what's this? Hmm, was it Carol and her children? What are you doing here? Startled, I accidentally dropped the sculpture on the floor. Oh god, my sculpture! Do you know what it is? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. You're not making my life miserable enough? Then out of nowhere, Carol barged in. What are you doing? You silly child! Apologize to Bummy right now or you are grounded! Carol, no, it's my fault she didn't- I'm sorry, Bummy. Then she ran out of her room, hands holding her face. I thought I saw her tears streaming down. What happened yesterday kept me tossing and turning the whole night. It's true Camille wasn't the most pleasant person, but Carol shouldn't have done that to her. Bummy, I bet you haven't seen those tools in your hometown before, right? <laughs> haven't you? So you're not ready to dissect a rat yet. Just watch others first. Whatever. I came here for new challenges, but all I got was mocking and belittling. Hey, are you alright? I raised my head to see Ted. Is this because of the biology class? Nah, I couldn't care less about them. They just can't accept a new kid more brilliant than they are. If it's not, so what troubles you? Um, why your sister hates me so much? She doesn't. She hates that you are everything she is not. Do you know that this is the longest time our mother has been around us since our father left? But in fact, she wasn't here for us. Then he told us how Carol was always traveling, leaving him and Camille alone, and it surely caused a deep hole in her children, especially Camille. That's why she acted like that to me. Actually, that sculpture was the one Mom brought us when she went to Disneyland years ago. Camille treasured it the most. My heart broke for them, for Camille. I understood her pain, and deep down I know I needed to do something to help fix this relationship. I came up with the idea of inviting Ted and Camille to go along with me to our shows so that they could spend more time with their mother. Seeing them happy together, it warmed my heart to know family will always be family, no matter what. Soon Ted and I became closer. I didn't know he had quite a craftsmanship with his sculptures. And you know what? Recently Camille seemed to be super nice towards me. We might make good friends in the near future, right? <laughs> Then, one night, while we were having dinner, Carol broke an exciting news to me. Bummy, congratulations! Some sponsors sent your application to a top medical school! Good job, Bummy! I haven't been this proud before, my child! Finally, I was a step closer to my dream! A few days later, I was preparing for my interview when I heard Carol screamed. What's wrong? You got a C- in biology? Someone mailed the sponsor a copy of your test, and now they are uninterested! They don't believe that you're a genius with this low score! Oh, my hard work is gone! Who did this? Ted and I looked at Camille at the same time. She was biting her nails nervously and sweating. So Camille did it to me? After everything happened? Camille, why? Cause, cause mom always loved her than us! What? It's okay. It's good that it happened. I was going to reject it anyway. What? I am very thankful for your kindness all this time, but I couldn't live on your help any longer. But Carol, there's a bigger problem here. You have been so buried in what could happen in the future to other kids, while you have ignored the present. You've ignored your kids. You have been looking in the wrong places for extraordinary kids. Did you know Camille has a YouTube channel with over 10,000 followers? Did you know that Ted is incredible with woodwork? He is a sculpture of you that he carries around, hoping for a day he can give it to you. They need you. Really need you. More than me or any kids need you. So where would you go? I just got admitted into a special program at the John Hopkins University. I was going to tell you tonight. Actually, I was preparing for the interview with them. Oh my, you're stronger than I thought. Can I see it? The sculpture of me, I mean. It's so beautiful. I'm so sorry, guys. I wanted to be someone significant. I wanted to be a big deal, but there is no bigger deal than being your mom. I'm sorry. I'm going to make it up to you. Bummy, I'm so sorry. I was angry and didn't think enough. I am so sorry. And thank you for everything you did to us. I know it's hard for you to forgive me, but... I forgive you. 
The car was eerily silent as the taxi drove me to the interview. I read my acceptance letter over and over during the trip. I earned it by my hard work, and I was determined to reach my dreams by my own effort. Finally, I could come to the place where people saw my true potential and attempted to help me reach my fullest. And here I was, ready to hold my dream medical degree. Our school has never witnessed a prodigious student like Bummy Alana. Only in one year, she has not only finished her course, but also contributed greatly to endoscopy surgery of the U.S. with her new discovery. Thank you, Mr. Adams. First, I couldn't find enough words to tell how glad I am for all the opportunities America has given me. The dean offered me a position here at the university. I am grateful, but I had to reject it. The woman who first took me to America thought she was saving me, but she never realized I was where I needed to be. My home, where I was much needed than here. So, I'm going back home to my family in Nigeria, and I hope to use all my knowledge to help my community. But whenever American needs me, I'll always be here to offer my humble help. Here they are. Carol, Ted, and Camille were also here to celebrate with me. They were all sad to know I was not staying here. But life is always open for a reunion, right? And finally, I was home with Mom and Dr. Jeff. One day, I was checking the new pack of medical equipment sent from America when I saw a sculpture of me. You sent for me? I didn't think you would make it. As long as it's you, nothing's impossible. Oh, wait. Hey guys! Hi, Bummy! Welcome to your mother-daughter channel! My name is Carol, and this is my extraordinary daughter, Camille. They send their regards. They say gymnastics is the queen of sports, and I say I'm at the queen moment of my life. I made the perfect landing and earned the gold medal. As I strutted back to my spot, this man rushed over to me. Your skills are impressive. I'm Nick, the Nationals coach, and I want you on my team. My ears began ringing, and my head felt like it was spinning, and I thought I was going to puke. The nausea wouldn't go away, while my super excited teammates kept pestering me. Say yes, Kylie! This chance is one in a lifetime. I can't take it anymore, so I open the door. No, I don't want to have a man as a coach. I hate you. I hate men. Hi, I'm Kylie, and there's a valid reason why I dislike men so much. My mom passed away when I was little, and instead of spending time with me, Dad became a serial dater. He always made excuses. People can't live without love. You'll understand when you're older. If this is what love did to people, then I didn't want it. I swore to never fall in love. Nuh-uh. I went to an all-girls boarding school, and as the years passed by, my hatred towards men grew. Just being around that man smell made me feel dizzy and nauseous. At home, Dad was waiting for me with his typical Hulk look. Kylie, why did you refuse to join the national team? Why turn down your dream? My dream or yours? As if you care, you were never there for me. That's your future, Kylie. I'll be fine. No way universities would turn down my talent. But what if you couldn't graduate? Dad, my grades might be bad, but I'm not that dumb. No, my business isn't doing so well. I can't afford your tuition fees anymore. You'll have to move back home. Wh what? If I don't graduate, then I can't go to uni. If I can't go to uni, then I can't find a job. And if- There's still this scholarship offer from another school for you to consider, though. I immediately agreed to it. I couldn't sit here watching Dad flush away my dreams with his incompetence. Yeah, a new environment might be a bit challenging, but I'm a tough girl. I can do this. Only the next day, Dad dropped me off at a fortress-like building that was, apparently, my new school. And to add more to the problem, standing there to greet me was a boy. Ugh. Now I officially had bad vibes about this place. I reluctantly followed him to the vice principal's office, and I had to sit there with my mouth covered. He pushed a form towards me. You don't look so well. Just let's get this done quickly. Please sign here. Then the vice principal reached out for a handshake. Welcome to St. John's All Boys High School. Sorry? All boys? Yes, that's correct. You're the only girl here. I barged out of the room. The corridor was full of boys. They were everywhere. Welcome home, Rosie. We've been waiting, Rosie. I tried to dash past them but it was so overwhelming that I tripped over my own feet and this boy stopped my fall. But my churning stomach had something to say. Blech. I threw up all over him. This boy shrieked out and let go of me. Everyone got down at me like I was some sort of exotic bird. With whatever dignity I had left, I pulled myself up and limped back into the vice principal's office. I reject the scholarship. You just signed the paperwork. You can't just leave. 
I was so mad and speechless. Dad must have set this whole thing up. It seemed I had no choice but to endure this hellish place. So, on the first day of school, I covered myself from head to toe like a ninja. But what are those banners? For me? I went into the classroom trying to not throw up. This place was seriously weird. I didn't sing, and I wasn't called Rosie. When the teacher told me to introduce myself, I decided to use this opportunity to set some ground rules. My name is Kylie. I don't sing, and you're all gross. I demand that you stay at least six feet away from me at all times, else I will backflip kick you into another dimension. To my surprise, the students weren't intimidated. Instead, they all applauded and wolf whistled me. Ugh. I hate boys! I trudged over to my seat and was about to sit down, but then someone kicked my chair away. I turned to glare at the culprit. Oh, it was the boy I puked on yesterday! Stay away! I don't want any more vomit on me! Carly and Jerry are both new students, so help them settle in, everyone! So, Jerry, huh? He glared back at me, in the midst of all the Cheshire cat grins from the other school boys. Oh, this is gonna be hell. After class, the boys followed me every step, so I had to do a somersault to get away, but that only made them cheer louder. I rushed back to my dorm, but the situation was not better. Had they never seen a girl before? I locked myself in my room every night and only left to make a quick dash to the canteen for food. After a week of living like this, I was so not okay. I was miserable in class and lonely at night. One evening, I was scrolling through my phone when I saw a hiring post from a cafe near my old school. Hmm, if I had a job after school, I could avoid the weird boys and hang around with my old friends. So I applied for the job, easily got hired, feeling all excited until I bumped into Jerry. Why, Why are, are you, you here? here? I hurried out of the kitchen. What to do now? Is this jerk haunting me or something? But I really needed this job, so I stuffed a piece of paper into Jerry's locker, saying that as we both snuck out of the dorm to work, let's keep this secret together. And surprisingly, he agreed to that. But that wasn't the only problem. I encountered a slippery issue, having butterfingers. I spilled coffee all over the floor, then slipped on it, dropped a cake on some woman's lap, and man, the amount of cups I've broken. I begged the owner to give me one last try as a baker, but the final products were horrifying. I was feeling disappointed when I heard someone say, Classmate, need any help? Oh, Jerry and his man smell. I rushed to the bathroom. Is everything okay in there? I'm okay. Just stay there. I'm allergic to men. I heard Jerry laugh, so I explained to him how I was being deadly serious, and being around men made me nauseous. Oh, so that's why you threw up on me that day? Hey, maybe I can help you with your job. Yes and no, I don't need your help. I'm not doing this for you. I- oh god, what are those? Breads? I know, it's horrible. Please stop. Kylie, as a devoted employee of this cafe, I insist on doing this for the customer's safety. On hearing this, I agreed to let Jerry help me. Thanks to his remote directing, I finally made a successful batch of bread and managed to keep my job. Since then, we have become a lot closer. Jerry had this idea to cure my allergy to men. He slowly let me approach boys at my own comfort level. At the cafe, he encouraged me to take the orders from male customers. At school, he helped me study in a group with some of his friends. At first, I was wary of them, but I guess they weren't so bad. Not only that, they also threw me a boys 101 intervention where they humorously analyzed boys' behaviors to help me get along. From how boys greet, yo, what's up, how they posed for cool photos, to the way a typical boy flirted. Are you a parking ticket? As you've got fine written all over you. That's how you flirt with girls? <laughs> Hilarious! You don't like it? But what if I tell you I was being serious? I like you, Kylie. I immediately covered my mouth, but not because I felt nauseous. What should I do? Say yes, or... Suddenly my phone rang. It was Dad. How's school, sweetie? Got a boyfriend yet? That's all he cared about? Right. That reminded me that all this was just Dad's setup, and I can't give him what he wants. No boyfriend! I yelled, then hung up. I turned around to tell Jerry to stop joking around, but the boys were already pinning him to the ground. How dare you flirt with Rosie? She's mine, not yours. Stop! I grabbed a magazine and declared, I'll never date any of you, ever, because this is my type. Now get out! But the next morning, I arrived in class to see all of the schoolboys in wigs and dresses. They mobbed me, and thank God, Jerry dragged me out of there just in time. Don't you find them odd? They became extremely competitive around me and kept on calling me Rosie? Jerry said he didn't understand either. Something's very fishy about this whole scholarship thing. So we snuck into the administration office to see if my file held my answers. 
After searching for a while, I found it. But whoever was being described here was not me. I wasn't a straight-A student. I didn't sing nor play the guitar. And I wasn't a social butterfly. Then Jerry passed me a binder labeled Only Rosie. There was a school legend that when Rosie appeared, the only flower in the garden would bloom. Rosie's magic was so powerful that every male student would fight for her love. There really was a flower blooming in the garden. Which means I was Rosie. So they only love me due to some rusty magic? I bet it's the same for you. I couldn't stay in this insane school any longer, so I went home and curled up in my room. On hearing a knock at the door, I peeked out and saw, Jerry? I slammed the door shut. Kylie, listen, this is all me. No magic whatsoever. At first, I thought you were a queen bee who liked the attention, but being around you made me realize you're a clumsy, cute crybaby, but also a strong girl who tries to stand on your own two feet. That's the reason why I like you. Ky- uh, Are you okay? Go on. Please. I like you because you're Kylie, not Rosie. I couldn't hold it in anymore and burst into tears. I finally opened up to people, but it's all fake. None of them wanted to be my friends. They only like Rosie. Then Dad appeared. Of course, it was him who let Jerry inside. Seeing me like that, he seemed sad, then sat me down to say something. Actually, your mom used to go to that school, too. Mom was a prodigy who excelled at both studying and singing. When the school's reputation was declining, the principal broke the rules to invite her to attend the school, in hopes that she would lead them to some achievements. At first, the male students objected it, but gradually, with her talent and good nature, she gained their respect, and they fondly called her Rosie. Your mother was incredible, and I couldn't believe my luck when I won her heart. I felt so lost without her that I tried to fill the void. I jumped from one relationship to another, leaving you all alone. Only later did I realize I could still find joy in life even without Rosie by my side. Kylie, I risked sending you to that school because I wanted you to face your fear. Don't dismiss love just because of your painful past, like I did. I finally understood where Dad's behaviors came from, and I felt so sorry for him. Hmm... Sorry for interrupting, but if Kylie's mother was the first Rosie, and her magic immediately charmed everyone, then why did she face objections at first? Oh, actually, only Rosie is merely a myth. There's no magic involved at all. Over the years, the story must have evolved into that fairy tale. Now that Jerry mentioned this, I realized my file looked more like Mom's than mine. Even before entering this school, everyone was talking about you being a musical prodigy and only dating top students. It's like someone created a fake image to make you irresistible. Dad said it was the vice principal who offered the scholarship. We put two and two together, and we were convinced that he must be behind all of this. Dad and I went to school to confront him, but he denied everything and even expelled me. The next day at work, Jerry told me something big. There are rumors about another schoolgirl. It looks like the vice principal wanted to find a new Rosie. This had to stop. He couldn't keep on using girls like this. It was about time his lies were exposed. The three of us falsified tons of female students' applications and finally got selected. On the day of admission, Jerry disguised himself as a girl and me as a boy, then went to school together. All the boys gathered around Jerry and gawped at him like he was the new iPhone or something. Then the vice principal introduced him as their new female student, Jessie. Hi, I'm Jessie, and I want to tell you a secret. Then he started ripping off his wig in the most dramatic way ever, leaving all the students gasping in shock. What? You don't think I'm pretty? Poof! I gripped my stomach and tried to control my laughter. You're very pretty. Oh, silly. I'm not just a pretty face. I'm also a musical prodigy. Then he pulled out a violin and started making scratchy noises, deafening everyone. Not to mention, I'm a very delicate little flower. Then he broke the violin in half before everyone's terrified eyes. That's my cue to step in. I took off my disguise and pointed at Jerry. Sneaky little snake. You trying to steal my men? All boys in this school are mine. Then I charged at Jerry and grabbed his hair. W why are you here? I've expelled you. Everyone was astonished to hear that and questioned the vice president about it. Then I waved the flower I was holding around. Guys, there is no only Rosie. This is the flower that heralds Rosie, and it looks pretty fake to me. The boys became even more heated towards the vice president. Fine, I did it. So what, only Rosie is not real? As long as it works. I only did this to revive the school anyway. This school deserves a principal who's as dedicated as me, not a has-been who never even shows up and could have retired by now. He was hopelessly yelling while a group of disgruntled students dragged him outside. The rest ran over to me and said they missed me. So even among all the lies, our friendships were still real. And better still, I didn't feel dizzy or sick at all now. 
Everyone was here to cheer me on. The boys, dad, and of course, my soon-to-be boyfriend, Jerry. <laughs> We're not dating yet, cause girl gotta play hard to get. <laughs> Suddenly, a voice interrupted our celebration. It was Nick, the national team's coach's voice. Great performance. Any chance you've reconsidered joining the team? Reconsidered? Nick, count me in 100%. No, a million percent in. Here I was, confronting my greatest fear. Math! Wendy, focus. What is 9 plus 11? A, 19, or B, 21? The numbers whirled around me. Panic set in. Uh, um, 9 plus 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 equals 19? No, 21? Great numerical gods, why is this so confusing? You're so extra. Sit up, I'll show you again. I still don't get why I have to do this, though. It's not like I'm going to school. Yeah, I quit school not long ago to help mom out making a couple of bucks. In case you haven't noticed, we're dirt poor. I'm Wendy, by the way. Fifteen and fabulous. Well, sorta. <laughs> I know I'm a big silly goofball, but the good thing is my brother, Leo, does not share the same brain cell with me. That guy ate knowledge for breakfast. He went to this elite high school, on scholarship of course, and always a top student three years in a row. That's like genius! Mom also said he's our only ticket out of poverty. That's why she held three jobs at once, while I gathered scrap metal to sell to the scrapyard to support his study. The three of us have been working hard to create a better life for our family. But then, one afternoon, I suddenly noticed posters of Leo that accused him of breaking his classmate's arm. What nonsense is this? I tore them all down and rushed home to see a bunch of gangsters breaking our things. My mom and Leo were in the corner, begging them to stop. Stop! What on earth are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing, brat? I'm collecting compensation for your brother's victim. He messed with the wrong person. The son of a loaded family. Y you got the wrong guy. Leo wouldn't hurt a fly. Right, Leo? I turned to him, but he just lowered his hat in guilt and defeat. How much then? Three thousand dollars. <laughs> Three thousand? <laughs> you kidding, right? Do I look like I'm kidding? Let her go. Just stop it. All of you. Then mom rushed to the kitchen and brought back all of our saving jars. They're about $1,000. Just take them and leave us alone. I'll pay the rest later. The thug let me go and grabbed the jars. We'll be back next month for the rest. Mom fell to her knees. She looked so hopeless amongst the mishmash. Mom, Wendy, I'm so sorry. Please let me help. The school already suspended me for a whole month. I'll, I'll get a job. I'll pay for the debt. No, my boy. Use this free time to study. Once you come back to school, I want you to be the perfect student so no one can ever look down on us again, okay? But what about the debt? Just leave it to me. I'll work some extra shifts here and there and everything will be sorted. Now go study. Th thank you. Mom, I won't let you down again. Then he left the room. That's when mom's smile wears off. I knew she only said that so Leo could have his peace of mind. The truth was, no amount of mom's extra shifts could get us 2,000 by next month. I think if the math was right, it's time for me to save the day. I tried to get a job, but somehow they all lasted for only one shift. Like when I was waiting for this diner, all the food and drink just fell out of my tray. Or that time when I work at construction site and I got my foot stuck on the thing I just built. <sighs> I came home feeling deflated. Just then, there was a knock at the door. It was Nathan, Leo's best friend. I could instantly feel my cheeks heating up. Hello, Erp to Wendy. Are you gonna let me in? Or are we gonna stand here, awkwardly? Uh, oh, uh, sure, come on in. <laughs> you look, uh, exhausted. You sure you're all right? It's just the whole thing with Leo. I've been trying to get a job to pay for the debt, but nothing worked. I'm sorry all that happened to your family, and I want to help you, but there's something you should know first. After the talk, Nathan got me a job as a maid for his cousin Zach's house. Other maids were showing me around when, GET OUT! A maid ran past us, crying her eyes out. What was that? That is the young master Zach throwing a tantrum. He's the illegitimate son of the light master and was only brought here five years ago by his grandfather. And let's just say, Madam Linda, his stepmom, is not so thrilled about it. They've been on each other's necks ever since. The girl you just saw was Madam Linda's favorite. She's been a thorn in Master Zack's side for a while now. Then I gotta find a way to get on both their good sides. To prove that I'm perfect for this job. Okay, first day at work. Madam Linda was complaining about Zack's toy car collection, so I threw them all away. But Zack went bonkers on me and went rummaging through the junkyard to find every single one of them. S sorry Master Zack, it's just Madam Linda- Oh, please. He immediately stormed off to confront Madam Linda. 
I felt bad. So to make amends between them, I cooked his favorite soup and told him that Madame Linda made it for him as an apology. But as he took the first bite, his face turned green and dashed to the nearest toilet. Oops. One rainy day, I was taking the trash out and saw a strange woman peeking from the fence. She suddenly tripped, so I helped her up, asking if she was looking for someone, but she just ran away. Whoa, Jesus, how long have you been standing there? Long enough. Come inside, it's freezing out here. Uh, sure. Later that day, I was cleaning Madame Linda's room when I accidentally knocked over her jewelry box. It crashed on the floor, spilling jewelry everywhere. One of the bangles snapped in half. I frantically pocketed it to fix it later. When the gruff butler swung the door open, I apologized and promised to fix the jewelry box, but he still insisted on firing me. Just then, Zack stepped in and ordered him to let it slide. Zack then stayed and watched me fix it. Where'd you learn to do that? It's nothing. I grew up in a trailer park. Everything we own came from the junkyard. They just need a little fixer-upper. I've been doing it since forever, so... You got a gift. Besides, reusing things is... cool. <laughs> Whatever you say, pretty guy. Say, you wanna hang out sometime? Like a date? Maybe. Won't your girlfriend get jealous? <laughs> what girlfriend? I'm very single and ready to mingle right now. <laughs> sure, why not? On the weekend, Zach took me to his favorite coffee shop, and I got to see a softer, more caring side of him. Turned out he never got a girlfriend, so I made him a flirting tutorial. For a price, of course. <laughs> At first, I thought he was just practicing on me by giving me flowers and fancy chocolates, but then he continued to woo me with my own list. He set up a romantic picnic under the stars in the backyard, took me to the park, and we watched the enchanting sunset together. That night, we walked back to the mansion. Before coming inside, Zack stopped me. These past weeks that I've known you have been the best moments of my life. Wendy, I think I've fallen for you. Will you be my girlfriend? <laughs> Where did you learn those cheesy words? Do you like them? <clears throat> is it hot in here? Or is it just you? Stop! <laughs> I just need you to promise to be on my side, no matter what. I promise. When Zack left, I returned to my room. I pulled out my diary and then ticked off the last box on my list. Well, it was fun, Zack, but everything must come to an end. Soon you'll pay for everything you did to my family. I knew the truth back when Nathan came to our house. There's something you should know first. Your brother was tricked. He didn't start the fight. A guy mocked your poor family, so Leo turned aggressive. After the incident, the guy was salty Leo beated him. So he faked a broken arm and had his family come for yours. They don't need your money. They just want you to suffer. And who's that guy? He's Zack, my cousin. What he did was wrong, so I'm on your side on this. And there's another thing. Nathan played a video of Linda and her thugs threatening my mom and demanding more money. My rage became scorching. That moment, I decided to get revenge. That's why I became a maid at Zack's house, sabotaged his relationship with Linda, and made him fall for me. Everything was going just as planned so far. But the next thing I knew, Mom called me to tell me that Leo had been expelled from school and ran away from home. My blood was boiling. That's it. Today's the day Zack goes down. I pulled out Linda's broken bangle and placed it on my bedside table. During the daily room check, the butler spotted it right away and informed Linda. She rushed over to reprimand me for stealing her jewelry. Just then, Zack swooped in to defend me. Zack, you have to trust me. I didn't steal it. I just wanted to fix it before turning it to Madame Linda. Don't worry, I believe you. You heard her. I know you despise me, but don't you dare drag my loved one into this. Oh, finally put it out in the open, huh? You and your low-life girlfriend. Birds of a feather. You're right, we're alike. And that means we're nothing like you, you evil witch. Ha! Huh. Let's see how you like it. Alone on the streets? Guards, throw them out now! The next second, Zack and I were dumped on the sidewalk along with our belongings. Watching him grappling his stuff, I couldn't help but chuckle. How does it feel to be discarded like an unwanted object? Enlightening, isn't it? What are you saying? You remember Leo, the person who broke your arm? Who you used to extort money from my family? I'm his sister. I think you got it wrong. Leo didn't break my arm. He only shoved me to the ground and said something like, don't talk nonsense about his family. I didn't care, but Linda kept telling me to skip school the next day. She must have used me to make a fuss. You mocked my family for being dirt poor. That's why Leo was so mad at you. That's not true. I used to be poor too. <sighs> you remember the woman lurking around the mansion? That's my real mom. She just wanted to make sure I was okay. Turned out, Zack and his mom were abandoned by his dad because of their humble background. Then his grandpa found him. Though Zack didn't want to, his mom made him come with his grandpa, so he'd have a better life. But what his mom didn't know was that heck of a mansion was the coldest, most isolated place. That is, until you came. 
and it hit me. Zack is telling the truth. That meant I had taken revenge on the wrong person. Shoot! I am so, so sorry. I had no idea. And now you're kicked out, Leo's gone, and there's a huge debt. I don't know what to do. Hey, hey, it's all right. One thing at a time, Kay. I'm not mad at you or anything. I just wish you'd told me, but it's fine. I don't really like that house anyway. What about your brother? He got expelled and left. I'm sure he's okay. I'll help you find him, yeah? Thank you, and I'm sorry. I don't know how to make it up to you. You don't have to. I got a feeling you didn't come up with this twisted plan. I didn't. It's actually your cousin, Nathan. I took Zack back to my place where he'd crash in the meantime. Mom was in tears. She told me that Leo was accused of plagiarizing an essay so he could no longer go to that school. But Leo's too smart to do such a thing. So Zack proposed we investigate at the school. To find whose essay Leo supposedly copied, we broke into the school's computer lab that night. We were snooping around when suddenly, Zack was grabbed from behind and dragged away. I slowly turned around and was shocked to the core. I sprinted to Nathan's house, banging on the door. Nathan! Zack! Zack was kidnapped! He's the heir to Adam's estate. They took him away for the ransom. The heir? What do you mean? Your grandfather's lawyer came to see Zack and I overheard him. Your grandfather's sick, so he authorized the lawyer to hand the will to his sole heir. Zack! The will? Do you know where it is? If we swap it for a fake one with someone else's name on it, they'll release Zack and target that person instead. Great idea. I think Zack left it in his bedroom. Maybe it's still there. Nathan and I hurried over to Zack's house. Nathan snuck into his bedroom while I was on the lookout at the door. Nathan switched the will for a fake one and took out a lighter and set it on fire. Just then, I turned on the light, scaring him to death. What on earth, Wendy? Kill the lights or we'll be caught. You mean, you'll be caught? Then I opened the door, revealing everyone in his family and my brother Leo. W what's going on? Enjoying the taste of your own medicine, cousin? Yeah, you just got busted. Remember when we were at the lab? I was shocked to the core to see my brother muffling Zack. Shh, be quiet or we'll get caught. Leo, I thought you left. Mom was worried sick. I know, I'm sorry, but I need to sort this out. Things have been sketchy ever since that incident with this guy. And now with this, I gotta prove my innocence. So I came here and found this. Look. Turns out, Leo's essay was identical to yours, Nathan. You took advantage of me to get revenge on Zack when he wasn't to blame. You told Leo Zack was badmouthing our family to stir things up between them. You made our lives miserable. I trusted you. I can't believe you'd go this far. You're always obsessed with Grandpa's inheritance. Everything's a competition for you to prove that you deserve to be a successor. All that work, but still nothing. Do you know how many sleepless nights I had to study? Or to hatch a plan? Worrying mom and dad would blame me for not trying? For not being being better and you just showed up and everyone sees you as this golden child and all my efforts have gone to waste why grandpa why not me you were left out of the will due to your greed and scheming behavior now i know it's your parents fault and there will be severe consequences for them and you nathan you will join the army after graduation to serve the country get disciplined and come back a better man guards take them away as nathan made his exit he paused at the sight of leo and i I'm truly sorry. For everything. Then he walked out the door. In the end, Grandpa chose to give Zack his share of the fortune. Zack, however, refused. He never wanted the money. All he wanted was to live comfortably with his mom. So that night, he packed up his things and was ready to go back home. His true home. Seeing Zack, I realized bearing hatred towards someone cannot solve your problem. It just puts you through so much pain. And even hurt other innocent people along the way. It best just to focus on yourself. You do you, and things will work out on their own. Like now that all mysteries are debunked, our family is free of debt, and Leo can go back to school. Full scholarship. Also, to compensate for what we've been through, Zach's grandpa decided to start a charity fund, and my family was the first to benefit from it. They even helped my mom secure a steady job. As for me, I found a knack for making things and found my place as an apprentice at a pottery studio. My co-workers have become my extended family. They always make fun of me whenever he picks me up. Hop on. We're going to a very special place today. Where to? It's a surprise. Hold tight. It's only 6 a.m., but Dad already woke me up. Hurry up, LaDonna. A huge storm's coming. Poor households await the city's plan for food and shelter. Oh, then what's the mayor's plan for my food? But Dad didn't listen and just drove away without letting me have breakfast. Well, I'm used to this anyway. A little backstory. We came from a long line of politicians. My grandpa, my uncles, all worked for the government. My dad actually broke with tradition and became a successful businessman. But I guess the apple really can't fall far from the tree. Last year, he took a sudden U-turn and moved back to his hometown to pursue a political career. And he was elected mayor! Since then, he had no time left for me.
Not to mention the judgy eyes I had to face at school. You look fine. It's not you. It's your dad's new policy they're whispering about. Don't mind them, LaDonna. What do us kids know about politics anyway? Here they are, Kira and Troy, my only friends here. In fact, Troy's even in a similar situation. His mom is the chief of police, but he deals with it pretty well. Have you been to the White House? Does the key to the city really open anything? Can you tell your dad to ban homework? Seriously, how could Troy stay calm before these stupid questions? And even the teachers wouldn't leave me alone. They always put me in charge of things. Please, just because my dad has great leadership doesn't mean I do too, as if I wasn't already swamped with chores. Once the last bell rang, I rushed to the grocery store. Since dad's always busy now, poor old me had to take up housework, and it's frozen meals all day every day. But today he'd come home early for dinner, so I'm gonna throw a feast. Except, none of these tasted edible. What's the problem? I followed the recipes very carefully. Did I come home at the wrong time? No, Dad, a perfect timing. My apple pie's ready. You mean that smoking thing in the oven? Oh no, my only ray of hope has also turned to ashes. I immediately ran to the convenience store, grabbed all of the instant foods and dashed home. But Dad's already fallen asleep. He must be exhausted. It's always been him who raised me as mom passed away giving birth to me. Now on top of that, he had to take care of this whole town. He needed a partner to share his burden and I needed to be taken care of as well. Let's see, getting to know someone new with dad's hectic schedule would be impossible. So maybe reconnect him with one of his exes? From my aunt, I learned he had two ex-girlfriends. One is Jade, his old classmate who's still single. Two is Alva, no other information. Let's start with Jade then. Next day, I immediately told Troy and Kira about my master plan. That's my Aunt Jade. No way! It's, it's faded. faded! Suddenly, a group rushed towards us, babbling about my uncle being appointed temporary secretary of state. Jeez, chill, guys. They kept flocking around, making me feel suffocated. Panicked, I ran away, and as I turned the corner, a hand pulled me back. Calm down. You're safe from that crazy crowd now. Thanks, but why did you help me? I've been in your position. I know what you're going through. Just like that, I found myself comfortably venting everything to her. It must be hard for your family of two. That's why I'm finding him a wife. Oh, good luck to you then, sweetie. I have to go now. What a lovely lady. If only everyone could be like her. With Kira's help, setting up a date for Dad and Jade was a piece of cake. We both dragged them to the same restaurant, then cued some cliché matchmaking moments. Me and Kira quickly excused ourselves and monitored things from afar. They seemed to have a good time, but as we leaned closer... Huh? Inflation? Food security? Obesity epidemic? They'd been chatting about politics this whole time? Dad! That's exactly why you're single! <sighs> On the way home, I constantly mentioned Jade, but Dad was nonchalant and switched the subject to his meeting instead. Ugh. Another one in 30 minutes. I'll have to stay home alone tonight. As he dropped me off, he added, Find yourself a boyfriend first before trying to set me up. <laughs> How annoying! I then called Kira to inform her that our matchmaking plan had failed, but it took her a while to accept it. You give up too soon. Is it because you don't like my aunt? No, Kira, it's because I know my dad. And if he said no, it's a no. Okay, now plan B. Alva. I did some digging and figured out the neighborhood where she lived. I'll go there tomorrow. So here I am now, completely lost. Except, isn't that the woman who helped me at school? I rushed over and thanked her for the other day, but she seemed a little off. After a lot of persuading, she finally told me the cause of her sorrow, a tragic love story. His family are all politicians, so they can't accept someone mediocre like me. I'm so sorry, but I'm sure you can find someone better. She shook her head, saying he'd recently moved back to town and was still single. That got her reminiscing about the good old days. But sadly, he's seeing someone else. <laughs> Wait a sec. Is that a photo of you two? May I see? She showed it to me. My thought exactly. That's my dad. So you're Alva? Yes, but how do you know? Because you're my dad's ex. Just who I'm looking for. I shrieked in happiness. But strangely, she cried even harder then hugged me. If that's your dad, then LaDonna... I'm not just his ex. I'm your mom. Hold up. What now? So, they were deeply in love despite my dad's family's disapproval. But when I was born, they got even angrier and kicked her out. Yet, this entire time, I thought my poor mom was no longer on this earth. Our reunion was cut short by dad's call. I wanted to ask him everything ASAP, but mom signaled me not to. Honey, don't tell Robert yet. 
Of course I look forward to our family's reunion, but I'm not ready to meet him. And perhaps neither is he. It'll be awkward for him and the woman he's seeing. No worries, Mom. There's nothing between them. The only woman for him is you. Having Mom beside me made my life so much better. She's a successful businesswoman, but still puts work aside to spend time with me. We went on picnics, shopping, watched movies together. And her cooking is the best. I devoured the grilled ribs in an instant. It's a thousand times better than frozen food. When I'm around her, I can be myself without worrying about the public's eye. I wish I could skip class every day to stay home with mom like this, but it's not that easy. At school, I excitedly told Kira and Troy all about my fun outings with mom, but they looked rather uninterested. Whatever, mom will pick me up later and we'll have a blast. Suddenly, buzzing talks from other tables cut off my thoughts. My cat eats faster than her. Indeed, our graceful princess. Guys, don't be fooled. She's in fact a delinquent who skips class all the time. Having a mare daddy is so lucky. If we did that, we'd be kicked out right away. Those mean girls always have something bad to say. I headed toward them to settle this once and for all, but my father's words echoed in my mind. LaDonna, everyone judges me by your behavior. Ugh, fine. They're right, LaDonna. You've been absent quite a lot lately. I, I just want to be around my mother. A good mom would never tell her daughter to skip class. Think about it. There must be a reason for your whole family to be against her. What do you know? They were the bad guys who unreasonably looked down on her. Then why did your dad keep in touch with my aunt, but cut ties with her? So, Kira was still annoyed that my dad and her aunt didn't become a thing? How petty. I walked off, but Troy ran after me. Kira's just worried about you. Also, you're living in the same town as your mom now. You'll have lots of time with her, so don't play truant again, okay? Here, I've marked the important parts we learned during your absence. Troy has always been gentle to me. He's right. I have tons of time for mom, but we can't keep sneaking around like this. My parents should reunite soon. I remembered the story of how my mom first met dad and got an idea. What's so important that you have to come here in this weather? I promised to help out a friend. Please pull over here and wait for me. The friend I was helping was none other than mom. I then waited a bit before telling dad to bring me an umbrella because it's raining too hard. Now it's your turn. Go get him, mom. And just like that, the romantic scene from many years ago was reenacted right before my eyes. My mom was soaking wet, dashed through the rain, then bumped into my father. My dad then bent down to help her up, looked right into her eyes, and dropped her on the ground? I was still in shock when dad charged towards me and dragged me back to the car. How did you know that woman? Um, I asked around. Just stop. Never see her again, got it? His extreme reaction was proof that mom really mattered. They'll definitely get back together soon because they had me, their special bond. That night, I called mom. She must have been really upset. It's all right, honey. I'm used to it. Your dad's family was... Never mind. Your birthday's coming. LaDonna, what do you want for a present? I just want you to be with me. Yes, sweetie. If only we could celebrate as a family. That's it. I insisted dad throw me a huge birthday party. I invited all my friends and acquaintances. When the party began, I stepped on stage and thanked everyone for coming. Lastly, the biggest thanks goes to the people who brought me into this world. Dad, Mom, please join me. I believe you all know my father already, but my mother, Alva Garrix. The crowd began talking and pointing. Now Dad has to acknowledge her. Please, it's a misunderstanding. Miss Garrix here is only an old friend, and it seems she got along very well with my daughter, which is just adorable. <laughs> Let's toast to our little princess's birthday. Unbelievable! He's fully committed to disregarding her. As the guests were busy chatting, Dad pulled me into a room. Ugh, he doesn't have the right to be mad here. Old friend, you're straight up lying. Elva is my mother. No, she's a gold digger. Look, there's no time right now. When do you ever have time for me? Dad just sighed, apologized, then sat me down to tell me that back when he first started his business, it failed, but he didn't want to ask his family for help. Mom berated him, saying he was a dumb loser who wouldn't take advantage of his family's power. Unable to change his mind, Mom left after I was born. No, no, that's not it. I'm sorry, Robert. I shouldn't have shown up here. It's all my fault. I... She suddenly passed out. Panicked, Dad and I put her in bed. That night, I checked on Mom constantly, then fell asleep next to her. I was awoken by my phone's notifications, so I quickly went out to check to not wake Mom. Oh my... Hundreds of articles about my dad came up. His old photos with Jade and with my mother were all over the news. The press was saying that he's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Dad's bombarded with calls from dozens of news outlets. It's her. Only Elva has these photos. 
Dad, look! How could such a frail person do anything? Suddenly, I saw a figure at the door to Mom's room. Dad and I tiptoed over, then grabbed them. Aha! Gotcha! Huh? Kira? Kira claimed that my mom's very suspicious, so she had to keep an eye on her. I swear she's faking it. I heard her on the phone just now. Enough, Kira. You're out of line this time. I don't want such a petty friend. Leave. Kira didn't say another word and just left. So did my dad. The protest at 4th Street is still going strong. All right, I'm coming. It's always work, work, work. Do these strangers matter more to him than his wife and kid? The next day, Troy asked me to meet up at the park for some update. So I unloaded everything onto him. I can't believe my dad rejected mom just to save face like that. He's not making as much money as when he had his business. Why is he so dead set on this job? I used to think like that about my mom too, but then I realized that she wasn't doing her job for money or fame, but simply contributing to society. I now entirely support her because it's her life's purpose. It might be the same for your dad. What Troy said lingered in my mind. It does make sense. If dad's all about glory, there's many other ways which don't require him bending over backwards day in and day out like this. Troy's always been understanding to his mom. And me? I've never been supportive of dad when he had to juggle between his job and me. When I got home, mom was nowhere to be seen, except a letter on the table. Mom said she's terminally ill and didn't have much longer. That's why she risked everything to be with me. But now her health worsened. She didn't want me to witness her pitiful condition, so she left. I immediately called her. It's dangerous in this abandoned construction site. Please don't come. I just need you to know I love you, LaDonna. I immediately knew where she was when she said that. I rushed over, but at the entrance, a scary-looking crew approached me. Don't worry, sweetie. They're our friends. Just listen to them. They wasted no time tying me up, then called Dad. As soon as he arrived, Mom dropped her act. Turned out, she planned to approach me right after knowing he was elected mayor. Her wish to rekindle with us was just to use Dad, but it didn't work on him, so she's pushing things this far. Sign here and our daughter will be safe. Many people will go bankrupt if that's signed. Don't ever think you could fool me. You couldn't care less about your daughter. Or are you still counting on those useless cops? Ma'am, you underestimate our law enforcers. It's Troy and Kira, followed by undercover policemen coming from all directions. Turns out, Kira actually heard the calls Alva made to her accomplices. She then told Troy and asked his mom to look into Alva. Coincidentally, the police had always been after Alva because she's been involved in a scheme that gave tenants a ridiculously huge debt. She colluded with the former mayor and wanted to continue the scam with my dad now. Before she's taken away, Alva still cried and begged for my help. I was nothing more than a puppet to you. And now you're talking about maternal love? A scammer like you deserves to be brought to justice. After Elva's arrest, I broke down crying. She's my mother. That's the only truth among all those lies. Dad hugged me and said sorry for everything. It's all my fault. I just foolishly fell into her trap because I wanted someone to take care of us. I'm sorry, LaDonna. You went through so much because of me and my job. It's okay, Dad. Now I see how meaningful your work is. I'm proud to be your daughter. And you too. Thank you. I decided to sign up for a cooking class to better support Dad. And this banquet is the fruits of my hard work. But before he could even sit down, an emergency call came. He gave me a sorry look, but I gladly said, Bye, Dad. I'll save you some. I was a little bummed out. But it's his job after all. And if he can't be changed, why not learn to enjoy it? Moments later, these hungry hippos already came. But hey, this just came to my mind. How about Troy's mom? She's also single and would look great with your dad, right? Nah, I've realized he already has a love of his life, serving the community. He's very happy with his choice. So I'll leave him be, for now. That's right. Besides, we can't be family. At least, not yet. I was tidying up my room when a call came through. Oh, my big sister. She lives with mom, so I've not seen her in a year. Blair, it's been a hot minute. How have you been? Hi, Karenin. Well, not so good. Mom left. Oh no, what happened? Then Blair told me it's due to mom's debts. She had run away from the loan sharks and left my sister behind. That's awful. So I told her to come to Portland and live with us. She agreed to come, but then I realized that Blair staying here wasn't really down to me. Oh well, it's not like I could leave her in danger, right? So later over dinner, I told my family about Blair's current situation. Oh, how terrible. Yes, Blair must come and stay. Yay! Their kindness didn't surprise me as my stepmom and stepsis, Chrissy, have been lovely to me ever since I moved in. You know what's even cooler? Christy is a rising teen pop star. 
but she's so sweet. We've grown super close, and she even told me all about her secret boyfriend, Damien. They'd been together long before Chrissy became famous, and had since kept their relationship out of the public eye. This is so exciting! I haven't seen Blair since our parents split. This guest bedroom is gonna be hers, and we're living under one roof again! Blair's basically my alter ego. She's pretty, outgoing, and popular, while I'm more of a homebody. Come to think of it, I see a lot of Blair and Chrissy. They're both so extroverted and confident. They'll get along just great. But to everyone's surprise, Blair showed up looking completely different. Wow, it seems like living with Mom, a party animal, had clearly influenced Blair. Hello, Blair. I'm Stacy, and this is my daughter Chrissy. Welcome to Portland. You must be tired from your trip. Let me take your bag. Sure. Huh? Doesn't it seem like everyone's excited about Blair's arrival, all except for Blair? Maybe she's just tired. I showed Blair her room and helped her unpack. Oh my god, they're unbearable. How can you stand living with them? They think they're so much better than everyone else. What? Blair had only spoken to them for five seconds. Why she disliked them so much already? Give them a chance, they're really lovely. Blair's probably just stressed out from all the mom stuff. Hopefully with time, she'll see how great stepmom and Chrissy are. Only things didn't get any better. After class, both Chrissy and Blair came up to me. Hey, hey wanna, wanna hang, hang out? out? I asked her first. Oh, then we can all go together. Sorry, Chrissy. It's just that we haven't seen each other in ages, and there's a lot of catching up to do. Maybe we can go to Sephora tomorrow to check out that new Anastasia palette you like. Sure, have fun. Then Chrissy left. I'm sure she really wants us all to hang out. Oh, please. She thinks just because she's popular, she can always get her own way. She's mid. Okay, maybe it's best not to mention either of my sisters to one another to avoid World War III. Things went on like that for a while. I took turns to hang out with Blair and Chrissy. Once, when Blair was chilling in my room, I noticed her smiling at her phone. Seemed like our homegirl had finally found something fun to enjoy around here. I excitedly asked her what she was watching. Look, isn't he cute? He goes to our school also. Wait. No, it can't be. That's Damien, Chrissy's secret boyfriend. If Blair learns that the girl she hates is her crush's girlfriend, all hell would break loose. I think I'll ask him out. Really? He's so popular, he must have hundreds of girls wrapped around his finger already. Besides, what if he's not into you? You'll only be rejected and get hurt. What do you mean? Am I not pretty enough? Oh, I see. You think that a popular guy like him is only suitable for your famous, fabulous other sister, Chrissy, don't you? No, no, that's not what I mean. You're gorgeous. In fact, out of his league. You deserve a guy who has time just for you. So why bother competing for attention from someone like him? Okay, thanks. But he's my type. I'll ask for his number Monday morning. Oh no, I just accidentally encouraged Blair to ask out Chrissy's boyfriend. I can't reveal that Chrissy and Damien are secretly together, but I can't let Blair steal someone else's boyfriend either. What a mess. I tossed and turned all night. Then when I woke up, I decided I'd just have to make Blair stop liking Damien. I don't condone catfishing, but right now it's the only way. Hey there, Blair, right? It's Damien here from math class. What you doing? A few seconds later, Blair replied, Oh my god, I was just thinking about getting your number. Looks like the first steps of my plan are working. I texted Blair as Damien regularly. I made sure he was a man of a thousand red flags. But for some puzzling reason, Blair seemed smitten with him. I gave him a seriously challengeable temperament. He could throw a tantrum one moment and become sweet the next. Then I photoshopped Damien's selfie into a photo of a messy bedroom, then sent it to Blair. Surely she couldn't abide by a narcissistic, messy guy like him. I'm so sorry, Damien, but I have to save my family. Huh? What? She sent back a picture of her room being messier than ever. She's always the clean freak around here. I had to see with my own eyes. H hey, may I borrow your hair curler? And what's with your room? So what if it's a bit untidy? Neat people are total psychos. Okay, it's time to get personal. Blair's biggest pet peeve was being commented on her look. So when she sent Damien a selfie, I didn't hold back. Babe, can't you dress more ladylike? And you really should cover up that awful tattoo. Voila, that's how you wake up the beast inside this fierce girl. <laughs> However, the next day, Blair showed up with a completely new look. Worse still, she walked straight over to Damien. I had to fake having an emergency to prevent a disaster from happening. Afterward, I texted Blair. I'm not ready to let everyone know about us yet. Please understand, babe. You know I like you. There, that should stop her from trying to approach him again. Even so, during lunch, Blair wouldn't stop blabbering about Damien and showing me his texts. Isn't he quite rude? You don't normally let guys tell you what to do. 
He's not. He's just opinionated. I'm into that. No, he's horrible. I don't understand why you like him. He's sweet. You just don't know him like I do. Our love is complicated, but that's what makes it special. Seriously, you call that love? What do you know? Okay, little Miss Love Guru, if you're really that experienced, make that guy your boyfriend. Succeed, and I'll give out the love of my life. If not, I'll do as I please. What Blair is daring me to do was impossible. That guy, Adrian, is as popular as Damien. While Damien's the friendly one, Adrian is nicknamed Jack Frost due to his icy cold exterior. Rumor has it, no one has ever seen him crack a smile. Surrender, as expected. Then step aside, sister. Not knowing what else to do, I agreed to the bet. This is for Blair, for Chrissy, for Dad's happiness. H Hi, Adrian, right? I, I, I'm, uh, are you free tonight? Or whenever. He gave me this cold glance, then went back to chatting with Damien. Please, I'm just trying to win a bet with my sister. One smile from you is enough to save the fate of an entire family and stop two girls becoming homeless. Can you just- Adrian gave me this odd look. Then he burst out laughing and took my hand. Sure thing. Can't wait for our date tonight. I left in a haze of confusion. That really just happened? Adrian must be messing around. But nope. He actually showed up at my doorstep that evening. This meant I'd won the bet, right? So I called Blair over to show her, but she just brushed it off. That proves nothing. Talk to me when Ice Boy professes his love for you. Man, I guess this means I'm going on a date. The tension in here was palpable. So I decided to break the awkward silence. Hey, where are we going? I mean, this isn't actually a real date, is it? It's definitely real. You insisted. I must have looked so dazed that he continued. Don't worry, I'm not messing with you. Anyway, I think you'll like where I'm taking you. I used to think he was incapable of smiling, but turns out he looks even cuter when he does. A drive through cinema? Wow! I'd seen these in old movies, but I had no idea it still existed. So, what's the deal with your sister Chrissy? You mentioned the bet? You know that Chrissy is my sister? Of course, it's not exactly hidden. Besides, I'm friends with Chrissy's boyfriend. So, you know? Yep, there's no secrets between me and Damien. And don't worry, I have his back. So, can you answer my question now? <laughs> I like this different side to Adrian. So before I could stop myself, I told him how the bet wasn't with Chrissy, but with my other sister, Blair. And I was catfishing Blair as Damien to protect my family, but it's barely working. Whoa, that's intense. Secrets make things complicated. Life sure would be easier if we could just be ourselves. So, why did you decide to go on a date with me? Don't you think it's weird? <laughs> no, not really. Beats how girls normally ask me out. I arrived home feeling on cloud nine, but then I walked past Chrissy's room and saw her upset. I asked her what's going on. It's Damien. He wants us to go public, but I told him I'm not ready yet. I like having this part of me private, and I don't want Damien to be open to backlash and scrutiny. But he didn't understand and thought I was embarrassed of him. Oh, Chrissy, what a pain. Give him time, I'm sure he'll come around. But the school performance is in a few days. How am I supposed to take the stage in this state? I hated seeing Chrissy so downhearted like this. And I thought about Adrian and what he said during our date about honesty. I don't know much about the pressures of fame. But I do know that your feelings for Damien are real. I don't think love is something that you should hide. Honesty is the best policy. It might be hard at first, but you can get through it together. Now, come to my case, I should also follow my own advice and put an end to my catfishing before it gets out of hand. I tried hard to think of the best way to break this to Blair while we were walking to school the next day. After much hesitation, I pulled her aside before entering school for a talk. Only, before I could get to the main part, Damien walked past and oddly, Blair didn't do so much as to blink. Seeing my confusion, she said, Yesterday, he ignored all of my messages. You're right, I deserve someone better. Anyway, what did you want to tell me? Oh, that, um, my date with Adrian was amazing. It all happened because of you, so thanks. And sorry about Damien. It's okay. That's strange. Did my smitten sister really just give up that easily? But anyway, at least it's all over now. <sighs> and I don't even have to come clean anymore. The day of Chrissy's performance arrived. Me, Adrian, and Damien had backstage access. Actually, I'm here for emotional support as Chrissy is about to tell everyone about her relationship with Damien. This is a surprise for Damien too. He just thinks we're here to get a better view of Chrissy. <laughs> she slays the performance and the audience adored her. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much. 
Actually, today is an extra special day because I have something. But suddenly Blair stormed onto the stage and snatched Chrissy's mic. How about making it even more special with this breaking news? Everyone, she's had a secret boyfriend all this time. She made the poor guy hide in the shadow so she can keep her squeaky clean image. She's lied to you all for years. Is someone like that worthy of your support? Blair ran off as soon as she finished. Boos start coming from the crowd. Many people began commenting on the situation in true TMZ fashion. What is this, 2009 VMA? No way! My Chrissy is taken! Meanwhile, Chrissy had a panic attack and froze there on the stage. I didn't know what to do. Neither did Damien. Luckily, Adrian kept calm and grabbed the walkie-talkie, connected to Chrissy's in-ear. Chrissy, listen to me. In times like these, there's only one way out, and that's confronting the truth and taking back the narrative. I looked at Adrian and realized something about my own problem. More on that later. For now, let's see how Chrissy handles this. Well, there goes my big reveal. Yes, I'm in a relationship but I only kept it quiet because I wanted to separate my personal life from my professional one. Being a public figure and a teenager at the same time is not as easy as you might think, so I didn't want to drag my loved one into that life too soon. On reflection, maybe this wasn't the best way to deal with this. I won't hide anything from my fans anymore, and those who truly support me won't judge or speak badly of my decision. Everyone, I want you to meet Damien, my boyfriend. The audience went wild! Aw, this is so cute! But I still had one more problem to deal with. Blair! I look everywhere and finally found her hiding under the bleaches. Blair, it's just me. Please come out. I started to talk about what just happened, but Blair didn't want to hear it. I know everything! You trick me because you think I'm an idiot! La 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 la! I let her finish her outburst and calm down. Then I apologized and told her the truth. I only did it because I didn't want you going after a boy who's already taken. I know, I went about it in a completely wrong way but I just wanted to keep our family together. I love you, and I don't want to be in the middle of your jealousy towards Chrissy anymore. If you just gave her a chance, you could have just been honest with me. This is all because you prefer Chrissy over me, don't you? No, of course not. I just wanted to protect you, and for there to not be any more conflict between you and Chrissy. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Actually, I'm not jealous of Chrissy because she's famous and gorgeous. It's actually because you guys are really close. We used to be that close when our parents divorced, and now, it's like I've been replaced. Blair's honesty touched me in the feels. I gave her a big hug, but then realized that we weren't alone. Actually, I'm jealous of you, Blair. You're all Kieran and Eva talks about, and I feel that, even though we're close, I can't compete with her real sister. Oh, so the tension between them wasn't just over a boy. It was actually over me. To me, you're both my real sisters, and I love you dearly. Come on, sisterly cuddle. Oh, by the way, how did you know that I was pretending to be Damien? I overheard your conversation with Chrissy. It didn't take much digging around to figure out it was you texting me, not the real Damien. While we're at it, I find it worrying you were still into him after all those red flags. In future, please let me vet your dates first. You're too easily blinded by good looks. Oh dear. That's why us girls have to stick together, especially when it comes to boys. My precious Sunday is ruined because of my not-so-precious sister, Emma, who insisted on dragging me to church for some sister time. We walked in to see the priest rushing over. Welcome in. You must be our new member, Janet. Whoa! whoa Just then, the holy statues nearby all fell over and shattered to pieces. It's a bad omen. She's a jinx. No, no, no! You devil! Get out of here! Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Hi, my name's Janet. If you think I'm a jinx too, you're seriously wrong. Because animators were one that last seen. Pause it right there and... See that? That's my sister, Emma. And fast forward a bit more. Pan over, please. There. That right there is the ringmaster behind my so-called bad luck. You must be wondering why I hadn't exposed Emma that day. It's because everyone is fooled by her naive Cinderella look and never believed how a living angel could do such mischievous deeds. But the truth is, she's the devil. She did everything to make me look like a walking disaster everywhere I go. But who am I, huh? That night, to get back at Emma, I hid under the bed till she was sound asleep, wrapped my icy cold hands around her ankles, jumped out from under the bed, and BOO! Emma screamed through the roof, and our parents walked into the room worried just to see me laughing hysterically. 
Right then, the police on patrol also barged in, thinking something real wrong went on in our house. We ended up spending the night trying to explain to them nothing happened, and they finally left. Do you know how many sleepless nights we've had just because of you girls' petty fights? That's it. I'm signing you both up to join a community farm from tomorrow. What? But Dad, I can't live amongst animals and dirt. For once, I agree with Emma. There's no way I'm going there. You're not going back till you learn to live with each other. Living with Emma 24-7? I'd much rather be the Jinx now. So the next morning, Mom and Dad drove us to the farm to live off the land and bond together. But look at this tranquility and picturesque scenery. Maybe coming here wasn't such a bad idea after all. Suddenly, a loud obnoxious track started playing from inside my suitcase, startling the animals, and they went rogue. Stop the music! But my suitcase was locked. I caught Emma smirking, pressing her phone, and the music suddenly stopped. Once everything was under control, the farmers gave me looks of disapproval. Just when I thought things couldn't be any worse, a trailer nearby slipped off and began to roll downhill, heading straight for an oblivious farmer. Emma immediately swooped in and pushed herself and the farmer out of harm's way just in the nick of time. Richard, are you okay? Oh, yes, thanks to this young lady. You saved my life. What a good luck charm you are. That trailer has been sitting there for ages without any problems. Why did it suddenly break just now? Oh, it's my sister. She has this reputation for bringing bad luck wherever she goes. I apologize on her behalf. No, 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 no. Don't listen to her. She's evil. That's not something you should say to your sister. Look at her. What an angel. Emma immediately activated her manipulating power. Aww. Come on. We got the nicest room for you. <laughs> hey, what about me? The next morning, I was told to milk the cows while Emma didn't even have to lift a finger, just wandering around and pulling pranks on me. In a panic, a guy appeared and helped me out. What happened here? The hoses are all snipped off. I'm so sorry about that. It's my sister's stupid prank to get me look like bad luck. Interesting. Oh well, we'll hand milk the cows until we get them replaced. Hand milk? That'd take forever. Emma's gonna have to pay. Hey, no need for that. I'll give you a hand. I'm Kai, by the way. He gave the bride a smile, and I instantly felt better. I'm Janet. Thanks for helping me, but which buttons do I push to get milk? Kai cracked up, and I felt like the dumbest thing in the world. I'm sorry, but that was so cute. Okay, you don't push any buttons. You squeeze it, like this. Just then, Sylvia walked by and saw us. Well, well, well. Who makes you smile like that, Kai? Janet, you are really something, huh? As she left, I felt my heart racing and saw Kai blushing also. Whew, it sure feels hot like summertime. So, Kai, how long have you been living here? Just recently. I'm actually a skier from the city too, but I came here due to some stuff. Come on, let's go sell the milk. Kai and I then made our way to the bustling market. Surprisingly, customers were eager to get their hands on our milk. I was ready to make my first hard-earned cash when suddenly... Ahem, <clears throat> you'd better watch out. You'd better not buy, better not drink this milk right here. Jinxie Janet's coming to town. The crowd buzzed with concern over our milk. Actually, I thought someone else was a jinx. You see, our milk is especially fresh today. All thanks to my good luck charm, Janet. She and I worked all morning to milk the cows by hand. Thanks to Kai's words, the crowd was excited again. Just like that, we sold out in just a few hours. Woohoo! But when we got home, people started praising Emma for bringing good luck to the business. Actually, it was Kai and me who milked the cows, and more thanks to Kai who did most of the heavy lifting. She has nothing to do with this. The room suddenly felt awkward and people started to look away. Only Sylvia cared to acknowledge us. I see. You two make a great team. What about us? I think we'll make a better team. Get off of me, you creep. Ouch. Feisty. Oh my gosh. Are you okay? Why are you acting like such an animal, Janet? I'm alright. She may be a bit cold right now, but she'll warm up to me in no time. Right, princess? Emma immediately gave me a death stare. Aiden, why are you here? I'm here for you, brother dearest. Mom and dad are worried sick back home. Holy cow, these two are related, but they're nothing alike. Well, it does explain why their tension was scorching up the room. Stop it, you two. Always with the bickering. It's getting late. Janet, will you go and lock the barn door? Oh, oh yes, definitely. But before I reached the barn, a hand suddenly pulled me back. Keep your claws off of Aiden. He's mine. 
Oh, I see. You're smitten with him, huh? Well, too bad, because he seems to like me instead, sister. How dare you? Emma dashed ahead of me towards the barn, turned all the lights on, blew on the deafening whistle, and the sheep went wild again. I desperately tried to stop the panic herd, but no use. Only when the farmer showed up and let the shepherd dog do his job was the scene under control. This is all your fault. You'll bring us nothing but bad luck and chaos. That's not true. I was trying to help while this was Emma's doing. Stop with all the blaming and start learning some manners, will you? <laughs> I was stunned. Behind Richard, Emma grinned slyly. She won this time, but not for long. Because how about I steal Emma's crush, aka Aiden, right in front of her? <laughs> well, actually, I didn't really have to steal anything. Because Aiden always found his way to me first. And he also brought Kai along. It was like something was going on between them. And they kept fighting to get my attention. They showered me with food, fought over the seat next to me at dinner, and wouldn't let me lift anything remotely heavy. It was getting a little annoying. But seeing Emma fuming with jealousy each time is so worth it. <laughs> One afternoon, Kai and I were picking flowers in the field when he gently tucked a flower in my hair. It looks good on you. Then, he lifted my face and leaned in closer. I was floating in the summer breeze, ready for a kiss, when we both got shaken up by the engine revving. Aiden? So pretty thing. Wanna go out with a date with me? She's with me. Can't you see? Well, maybe I'm blinded. Blinded by my love for you. Um, how about you two can show some brotherly love and go together, huh? Then I walked off, only to see Emma's blonde head sticking out from the flowers. Hey Aiden, on second thought, I'd love to go with you, shall we? Driving away, I could see Emma furious, and Kai, with sad eyes following me? But the thing was, this was hella awkward. I don't feel like flirting if there was no Emma, and he, well, I don't know, couldn't stand it anymore. So I told him to stop at this random clothing store and insisted he try on this fancy suit. Whoa, you cleaned up nicely, huh? Do I not look good usually? Well, you kind of look like a hooligan. <laughs> Is that genuine joy I see on your face? What? I'm always smiling. Oh, really? You and Kai were ready to bite each other's heads off just then. You don't know everything about us, Janet. I know you have a thing for him, but I can never let you two be together. Not this time. We came back to the farm to see Emma waiting for us, all agitated. You tramp! Isn't Kai enough for you? Now you're playing the double game with Aiden? And you're just jealous because Aiden doesn't like you. That's right. I only have eyes for Janet. She and Kai were never together. So quit sticking your nose into our business. Emma couldn't utter a word. For the first time, she seemed so vulnerable, then rushed away in tears. Look what you did, brother. Playing with both Emma's and Janet's hearts is a low blow. You're one to talk. Wasn't the thing with Tina your low blow? Tina? Tina who? Tina was your crush. I had nothing to do with her. It's about time you get over that. That's not what Tina said. She told me you flirted with her, and you abandoned her when she's falling for you. She lied, okay? She wanted to use you against me, and never once reciprocated her obsessive behaviors. I just want to leave everything behind and enjoy my life here, with her. So Aiden, please, just let us be. Too bad. She seems to like me instead. <laughs> Can't you see? She doesn't care if her sister likes me. She still chose me over you. Dang, those words hit me hard. I didn't realize what I'd done to Emma all along. <sighs> it's time to end all these silly sibling conflicts. Guys, stop. Can't you see you're hurting each other just like Emma and I? Janet, this jerk plays with you and Emma. He deserves a fist or two. No, Kai. I'm not exactly innocent either. I was also using Aiden to get back at Emma. You what? I know, I know. But all these petty revenge doesn't bring us any good. No one wins at all. And honestly, I regretted having hurt Emma. And so should you guys. <laughs> you want this golden boy to drop his sky-high ego? Yeah, good luck with that. I'm not a golden boy, Aiden. <laughs> Are you kidding me? With all your success and skiing trophies, mom and dad can even see me behind all that. When you left home, they freaked out and made me go looking for you. Do you know the reason I quit skiing and left home? Because mom and dad wouldn't stop pressuring me. It's suffocating. Every time I stand on the rink, my whole body shakes like crazy. I'm not perfect, Aiden, and I did not want to take away any attention from you. I'm sorry if you ever feel that way. Well, I didn't know. You could have told us what you'd gone through. To who? To mom and dad? The ones who keep pushing and nagging? Sorry I wasn't there for you. Heck, I was the worst. Right? You two could work this out. Now if you excuse me, I have my own sibling conflict to resolve. I was about to leave when we heard Emma screaming. Fire! Fire! Help! 
We immediately rushed to her, and the fire already caught on the haystack. It was spreading fast. I, I accidentally knocked over the oil lamp. What do we do now? You go call the firefighter. Aiden, you go get everyone here. Us two, we will go get water. Go, go, go. Kai and I tried our best to pour bucket after bucket of water, but it only stopped the fire from spreading, not put it out. We almost exhausted ourselves when the farmers arrived along with the firefighter. And luckily, after half an hour, everything was under control. Phew. But then, the farmers started surrounding me. It was because of you, isn't it? Every time incidents happen, you're always on the scene. Coincident? I think not. There we go again. But this time, I'm too beat up to even say anything. Then, there was Emma, petrified in fear, so I used every last effort to stand up. That's right, I knocked over the oil lamp and caused this fire. What are you doing? It's okay, I'm used to this. No, it was my fault. Janet's just trying to take the fall. In fact, this whole time, I was the one doing all the damage and blaming it on Janet. Was this for real? Emma standing up for me? You! Is this some kind of childish joke? You could have really harmed everyone here. This is our life work, not your girls' playground. I... I'm truly sorry. That's it. Tomorrow morning, you'll have to leave here for good. Both of you. We had no choice but to call our parents to pick us up. Meanwhile, I gotta pack my stuff. Hey... I know I've been mean to you since forever, so why did you still take the blame for me? I'm just tired of petty fights. Besides, I feel bad for stealing Aiden away from you. I don't have any feelings for him, and I don't think he falls for me either. I just wanted to mess with you. I figured. Um, I actually heard what you guys were talking about before, and it hit me hard. You know, I used to enjoy being the only child. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, when you came... It felt like all the attention and love was stripped away from me. I felt so lonely and jealous, so I decided to make you the center of attention, but in the worst way possible. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's all in the past now. I just want us to get along. And me not be called a jinx anymore. You got it. The next morning, our parents arrived all angry. We were so ready for a long-term grounding. But once they saw us holding hands, they were pleased. Honey, I think your plan worked. I knew it. You two can be little troublemakers, but deep down you still love each other. Come on, let's go home. Can we just wait for a few minutes? I don't want to leave without saying goodbye to Kai. But what took him so long? I gotta get going. Then Kai finally showed up. Wait up! I rushed out of the car and ran to give him a big hug. I thought you wouldn't come to say goodbye. How could I not? Especially when you forget the most important thing. Really? What is it? It's me, you silly. Oh, you're coming back to the city? Yes, I have a reason to be back now. To the city, to skiing, and what is it? It's you. Suddenly, a tree fell over right beside us and crashed the mailbox, causing all of the mail to fly out. Huh, <laughs> you really are bad luck, aren't you? Hey, that tree was already rotten. And don't you think that it barely missing us means I'm good luck? I'm just kidding. Hey there, animated story show viewers. I'm Crystal, a model and influencer, and I'm here for the Trend Like This Influencer Awards. Why don't you come on in and get ready with me? I know what you're thinking. I have a unique look. You see, I have vitiligo, a condition that causes pale patches to develop on my skin. It's definitely different, but I don't really see it as a disadvantage, but rather one of my biggest perks in life. Since I was a kid, people have always gawped at me in the street. But luckily, my mom and big sis have always been there to support me. Honey, they're only looking at you that way because you're beautifully different. Yeah, Crystal, never doubt yourself. You're one of a kind. Thanks to them, I've grown to adore the way I look. Then one time, while we were walking in the park, this eccentric-looking man approached me. Oh my word, your skin! It's a masterpiece! Turns out, he was Bo Ivanov, the world-renowned photographer. He begged me to model for him, and with the encouragement of my mom and sis, I agreed, and my photos became a viral hit. That's when my interest in modeling sparked. I joined this awesome modeling agent and got to learn all poses for photo shoots, wear these gorgeous outfits, and best of all, have makeup done to complement my vitiligo, not to hide it. Ever since then, I've worked my butt off, fully committed to my work. That's how I became the face of multiple fashion brands and built up my influence empire. I wanted to pave the way for people like me to love themselves and celebrate our own uniqueness. Cause look at me, my career, my life could come to this point today, all thanks to my skin. And I wouldn't change it for the world. But then this morning came, I woke up to see, yeah, my vitiligo patches, they were gone. This can't be happening. I still have tons of fashion shows and events booked for the rest of the year. Without my patches, will they all cancel on me? Panicked, I called my manager, Alex, and she immediately rushed into my apartment. 
This shouldn't have happened. The project with Red Rush is next week. I know that. What can I do? Go see a dermatologist? No, Crystal. You can't breathe a word about this to anyone. You don't want to ruin your career, do you? Well, no, but I can't hide inside forever. No, you can't. But you can fake your patches. Just use makeup. Draw some on. What? You mean I should lie to everyone? Your choice. It's either that or kiss goodbye to your career. This is wrong, I know, but I've worked so hard for this. I couldn't just give up now. I guess the foundation would have to make do. I went back to my daily modeling life, and luckily no one seemed to suspect anything. But I was so on edge and constantly checking my makeup. Crystal, have you heard? The brand Raris is looking for models with unconventional features for its newest fashion collection. You're the perfect fit! OMG! Everyone who's anyone in fashion knew of the Raris' creator, Mr. Finnegan. If I become his muse, that's my step into high fashion world! I can't miss this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity! I got my focus straight, fearlessly walking into the building, when suddenly my heel got stuck. I tumbled backward, and out of nowhere, these strong arms wrapped around me, and I landed straight into their warm embrace. For a moment there, I could feel their divine scent overpowering me. Hmm, you're sauvage, isn't it? You don't change much, do you? Still clumsy, even though you're now a superstar. Hold up. This voice, it's Sam, my high school ride or die. My, my, puberty has hit him hard, huh? Samuel knelt down and gently put the heel back on my foot. Yep, my heart was definitely flipping out of my chest. You're going in for the casting, right? Oh, um, yes, but how do you know? I'm one of the judges. I gotta go now. Break a leg, uh, but not literally. Wow, Samuel's made a name for himself already. Impressive. Wait, Crystal, you're here for work. And now time to shine. I strutted my way along the catwalk, doing my signature twist-turn pose at the end of it. As expected, all the judges were mesmerized. This job was in the bag. Just then, everyone went ooh and aw at the girl next in line. It's Amanda! She's known as the super rookie, who challenges the modeling world's standards. Ironically, that title once belonged to me, but that's how this industry works. You can easily be dismissed if not careful. We got the results right after the casting. As expected, I was in for the show. Hooray! Hey, Crystal, right? Amanda, huge fan of yours. Say, can a pro like you give this rookie any advice while we train together? You do know this is a competition, right? That means no help. Then I shimmied off. Day one of the training and I already messed up. I had to disguise myself to sneak out and buy a new one. Crisis averted, but this did make me 30 minutes late. You're the professional. Act like one so us amateur can look up to. A veteran in modeling, or so they say. Those chicks wouldn't miss the chance to dethrone me, especially her. Welcome, everyone. May I introduce you to our Fall 2023 Haute Couture Collection. It is inspired by the elegant art of ballet. So besides your usual training, you'll have a chance to learn some of the moves to capture its true essence. Then I'll pick my star, my vedette. Ballet? I hadn't done that since the accident. Little six-year-old me was having a ballet performance and had to do this crazy spinning technique. But somehow, I ended up twirling like a humming top, then face-planted right on the stage. I never forget the audience's mocking waves of laughter. No, get yourself together, Crystal. Whatever the challenge is, I'll succeed and rock the vedette position. The first lesson was catwalk. Easy peasy, no one came close to matching me. Good posture, excellent posing. Well done, Crystal. Aw, he's so sweet. Can we just take a break to admire this piece of art? Come on, why are you so shy today, Crystal? Your patches are superb. <laughs> Except they're just the magic of makeup. But the nightmare had only just begun. Jeez, these clothes were way too tight. They got me melting like the witch from The Wizard of Oz. Gotta go touch up. Then during another session, I couldn't keep my balance and was wobblier than a jellyfish. Meanwhile, Amanda effortlessly executed all those moves. A few days later, Mr. Finnegan organized a photo shoot, which we had to pose like a ballerina on this revolving platform. The past trauma immediately rushed back into my head. I stepped onto the platform shaking like a leaf. Only with Samuel holding my hands could I imagine to do the simplest pose. At least it's over now. My, my, our pro seems a little rusty, doesn't she? Just step back and let one of us younger girls take care of this. Right, Amanda? Go practice, Xena. Amanda stepped up to the platform. Her body started moving like a real swan. Gorgeous, Amanda. You're as graceful as the ballerina in the musical box. That's it. I think we got the shot. Well done. The whole set erupted in applause, and Amanda was the center of attention. Looks like you could learn a thing or two from your junior. 
Look, I may not be the best ballerina out there, but I'll show them where 1,000% efforts get me in life. So I stayed later after the training to practice more, starting with stretching. Ouch, not as easy as it looked. Okay, let's try again. Just have to raise my leg and... Whoa, whoa! Okay, this time it has to work. And now the hardest part, sur le point. Uh-oh. Just then, Samuel appeared, trying to catch me, but we both ended up stumbling on the floor. Don't try too hard. You may hurt yourself. It's just, the vedette means a lot to me. I know you can do it. You've been such a positive influence, and I know that energy can get you what you want. No, my patches. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It's okay. I crossed the line. I'll just leave now. Don't, please. If you only knew the truth, you wouldn't think so highly of me. Hey, what's wrong? You can talk to me, you know. Just then, the lights brightened around us. What are you two doing here at this hour? Samuel looked startled and immediately kept his distance from me. Nothing. I saw Crystal practicing. Thought I could give her some advice. That's not fair. I need some too. What do you think of my releve? They started laughing together like a married couple. Since when did they get so close? After a few days of intense practice, I may not be a ballet master yet, but I did feel more confident about facing the final challenge, which decided who would be the vedette. Look at this gorgeous couture design. I would make a perfect black swan. I tried the dress on, but accidentally smudged the foundation and got it all over the dress. Oh no! I immediately rushed to the bathroom trying to wash the stain off. Stupid foundation. Super stay my butt. The door suddenly snapped open and in stepped, Amanda! You, your vitiligo patches? They're coming off? And what are you doing with the dress? I tried to hide it, but she already snatched it away from me. Is it foundation stain? Did you fake your vitiligo? No, no, I was diagnosed with vitiligo for real, I, I swear. I told her the truth, thought she was going to use it against me, but to my surprise, she looked heartbroken. I decided to pursue modeling because I felt inspired by you, but now you're telling me it's all a scam? How could you? Amanda, wait, please. I, I thought you were against me. Does it matter anymore? Now that I got a taste of the truth, you don't deserve my respect. I was at an utter loss for words. I'd been so wrapped up in fear of losing my career that I couldn't care less how my action could affect those who looked up to me. I'm nothing more than a hypocrite. I couldn't live like this anymore. Vitiligo or not, I had to stay true to who I am. I walked straight up to the judges panel and wiped all my foundation away right in front of them. Mr. Finnegan, I no longer fit in your collection. The truth is, my vitiligo has gone. I no longer have any unconventional features. Thus, I'm here to announce that I will cut myself from the show. I'm deeply sorry for all the trouble I caused. I turned to walk out the door, but there stood Samuel. Crystal, I don't understand. I'm sorry, Sam. I'm not the person you think I am. I ran home, hid under the blanket, and cried myself to sleep. Suddenly, a call from my manager woke me up. How can you sleep at this hour? The press is going wild. They're calling you an attention-seeking fraud. I immediately came to my senses and looked up the news. Oh no, how could it break out so fast? At this speed, I'd be cancelled by tomorrow morning. See what happens when you act out of my order? Gosh, you models are so dumb. Don't go anywhere. I'll be there to handle this. Was she being for real? All of this was her idea in the first place. Enough! Have fun dealing with this on your own, Alex. I shut down my phone, packed my stuff, and left it all behind to go to my secret place. I used to spend time here with my family when I was a kid. Being surrounded by nature calms me down. Suddenly a hand pressed on my shoulder. Hey, we've been looking for you. Samuel? And Amanda? Did you guys follow me here? It's the only way we could find you. I'm sorry for going at you like that. I was so shocked. You don't have to. It's all my fault. I lost myself when my vitiligo went away. I acted out of fear and ended up disappointing everyone who's counting on me. <sighs> well, it's hard to stay sane when your identity is taken from you. But what's important is you've learned your lesson. Now, where is the fearless, confident crystal we all love? She's right. Patches or not, you're always special to us. That means a lot to me. Thanks, you guys. Turns out I'd misunderstood Amanda this whole time. She's brilliant, gorgeous, and caring. And perfect for Samuel. Welp, that stings. Suppose it's time I got back to work for some damage control. I opened the phone to see hundreds of notifications. Among them was a message from Mr. Finnegan, saying he has a place for me at the fashion show. So it's not the end for me, right? Go get it, girl.
Yes, it felt so good to be back. Crystal, you're here. I have great news. You'll be the vedette for this collection. Me? But I don't have any unconventional features. Doesn't matter. You're perfect the way you are. Two girls will stand by your side, and you'll be in the center wearing this work of art. An elegant swan among the flock of ugly ducks. Isn't that a bit offensive? So this was your plan all along? Playing dirty tricks to save your flopped career? Cut it, Xena. Mocking me won't change the situation. There's something fishy going on here, and I'm gonna get to the end of it. Finally, the show has come. As soon as I got the signal, I strutted to the runway confidently, turning heads to my every step. But it's not for the reason you're thinking. I actually switched places with Amanda, and now all the spotlights are on her. Right at that moment, Mr. Finnegan bolted to the runway. What do you think you're doing? You ruined my show. I had a deal with her. I... What deal? Tell me. Right now. I... It's her who's behind this. Alex? Ugh, that snake! It turned out Alex bribed Mr. Finnegan to let me be the vedette and dragged the models with unconventional features down since I'm no longer one of them. Hearing that, all the models turned furious, ready to jump at the two frauds. You two have crossed the line. I don't need any of your manipulative games to continue my career. I will stay true to myself no matter what. Unconventional features or not, I'm always willing to speak up for them because everyone is beautiful in their own way and they deserve a chance to showcase their beauty to the world. The audience erupted in cheers and applause while Mr. Finnegan and Alex were surrounded by cameras and criticism. Justice served. After all that drama, I'm still modeling but with a different agency that fully accepts me for the real me. I continued to influence young people on self-love and being uniquely themselves. Amanda and I became the best of friends. We also made tons of plans to collaborate with Samuel. But honestly, I couldn't shake off this heart-wrenching feeling whenever these two were together. Luckily, my hectic schedule has left me no time to think about that. Guess what? After days and nights of hard work, I now have my own line of skincare products called Only You. Exciting, right? Oh, Sam, you made it. Wow, they're beautiful. Amanda will love them. Uh, no, they're not for Amanda. They're for you. Crystal, I... I'm crazy about you. I always have been. What? It's me you like all along? Then why didn't you tell me that before, silly? I leaped into his arms, and we shared the most amazing kiss. Perfect ending for an amazing journey, huh? Hi, my name is Danielle. Danny for short. And this is not exactly a good time. Smile, Danny. Don't make us feel bad. Yeah, I'm so happy to be sent away out of your sight. Don't get us wrong, darling. You're gonna love this school. Right, honey? Yes, it's a prestigious school for children of affluent families. Your mother and I loved our time at Kingsbury as well. Because it was perfect for you. Trust me, I'm nothing like you. But one day you'll thank us for keeping you off the streets. It's always that condescending tone. As much as I hated being stuck at some age-old boarding school, I could use some time away from my parents. Before I go on, I should mention how this happened. Simple. I saw a big tough guy pushing around my friend, so I slashed his car tires in front of him to teach him a lesson. But to my parents, that was a rebellious act, so they're sending me to some boarding school as punishment. As we pulled up to Kingsbury's gates, I momentarily forgot how much I didn't want to be there. The medieval castle towers disappearing into the clouds could be mistaken for Hogwarts. I actually felt a string of hope for my future here. Unfortunately, those hopeful thoughts were short-lived. The principal, Mr. Hooper, had already read through my file and made up his mind about me. Rest assured, we have a reputation for our discipline for a reason, and students like Danielle here benefit the most from it. Clearly not the fresh start I had imagined. Mrs. Bell led me down the hall, then stopped at the door to room 237. A girl answered. Hi, Rumi. I'm Cassandra. You can call me Cass. Welcome to Kingsbury. Danny... You'll be under Cassandra's supervision outside school hours. She's a model student who has been here long enough to know that there is no way around our rules. Of course they'd make the teacher's pet babysit me. Awesome. Cass was worse than I thought. She constantly used looking for things as an excuse to touch my stuff. Surely she snooped around when I wasn't here too. So I figured I could have a little fun. I'd give this nosy roommate something to poke her nose into. This looks like an ordinary diary, but on the inside, I wrote about how I'd bring a vodka-filled water bottle to class, put bedbugs in Cass's bed, and sell cheat sheets to other students. You know, fun stuff. I definitely wouldn't do any of that, but gotta give our audience some drama, right? <laughs> and the next day, Cass's behavior confirmed she had really read it. Is everything okay, Cass? What? Everything's fine. Just thought it was time to wash the sheets. Don't mind me. 
Sure, girl, I believe you. At Kingsbury, there were roles for just about everything. I managed to break half of them within my first two weeks just by existing, it seemed. Worse still, the punishments hardly ever match the crimes. I once had to reshelve hundreds of books for missing the 8pm curfew just because I was studying in the library. Another time, I had to clean the dining hall for an entire week because my shirt was untucked for a second. Not to mention, Mrs. Bell seemed to have eyes out for everything, everywhere, all at once. What in the world? How was I supposed to know Teen Vogue was considered contraband here? And that was punishable by cleaning every single candle holder in the school church. Could this school be any more constricting? Do they really expect us to entertain ourselves by laughing at the clouds like we're patients in an asylum? Or what? With literally zero fun, no wonder why everyone here always looks like zombies. I hear you're the new school rebel. Danielle, right? I'm Caroline. What do you say we blow this pop school stand and go have some real fun? No thanks, I've had enough trouble already. It's fine, come on. Hey, you, finish this up, won't you? The audacity of this chick, though. Um, how about no? You can't boss people around like that. Drop that self-righteous act already. No need to pretend you care about dorks. I'm good, and he's not the dork here. Ugh, I thought you were cool. What was that about? That boy thanked me, introduced himself as Ian, and asked what trivial fault I must have made to be stuck with this boring chore. So we chatted and made fun of Kingsbury's rules while I finished up. I felt like I was finally seen after those awful first weeks. Suddenly, things didn't feel so bad anymore. However, Caroline already set out to make my life miserable. This morning, she blocked me in the hallway right before the bell rang, which got me in trouble for being late and running. If she wasn't getting me in trouble, she was trying to humiliate me. And annoyingly, it worked. As much as I wanted to do something about it, I knew that any sort of retaliation would get me in more trouble. The only peaceful moments I had were with Ian. How come I never knew about these cool areas before? This is the entertainment room in the home theater system, and out there is our Olympic-sized swimming pool and the croquet field. Pretty cool, right? But we're almost never allowed to use them. Sometimes I think these are here just to impress parents. This place is unbelievable. All work and no play? Is this a prison? And still, I had a nosy roommate to deal with. To keep up the ruse, I wrote some more made-up shenanigans in my dummy diary. Ridiculous rules, Caroline's antics, and how passionately I hated Kingsbury made their way into the diary as well. We we're trapped on campus and anything fun was against the rules. It felt like we we're here to be reprogrammed into obedient robots our parents wish we were. But at least Ian's cool. The next day, Cass kept trying to strike up a conversation with me. Hey, Rumi. Everything good with you? Define everything. Like, how are you liking Kingsbury? Is anyone giving you trouble or anything? Should I be having problems? No, no, I hope not. I just thought you seemed a little down. As your roomie, I wanted you to know that I'm here for you, if you need a friend. Oh, she must have read my diary again. But honestly, I found her clumsy cover-up quite endearing. Then she tried to change the subject to Caroline, who turned out to be her ex roomie I know she's mean, but she wasn't always that way. She only changed after a big trouble that almost got her kicked out. Wow, what could she have possibly done? Cass said Caroline then soon moved to another room also. I can't help but feel bad for her, though. She was actually kind to me. Cass seemed genuinely nice, but I wanted to see if she could be honest. If you're really my friend, then tell me, did you read my diary? You know? But hear me out. Your parents paid me to keep an eye on you and report everything to them. I agreed because I thought I was helping you stay on track. But Cass said she soon realized I wasn't really doing those bad deeds, so she actually told my parents good things only. I promise I've stopped working for them. It was wrong of them to spy on you, but I was in the wrong too. I'm sorry, can you forgive me? I believed her, but it wouldn't hurt to use this newfound friendship for some good. So I asked Cass to propose a fun activity for the upcoming holiday season to lighten up this lifeless place. Teachers listen to you, and we'll donate the money to a good cause. You love this place, don't you? Help make everyone else love it too. Sounds great. Let's do it. Thanks to Cass, our Christmas market came to life. I'd never seen so many smiling faces at Kingsbury. I even managed to secure some last-minute entertainment. Surprisingly, Ian volunteered to perform, and he's really good. He usually wasn't one to stand out, but that night, things changed. Maybe it was the Christmas lights or the Ed Sheeran effect was making Ian everyone's crush, including mine. Not only did we have a blast, but also raised thousands of dollars to donate to a local hospital. 
A few days after that, we saw Caroline being flirty towards Ian. Of course Caroline would try to sink her teeth into Ian now that she knew he's hot. Luckily, Ian didn't seem interested. What you looking at? Just you, making an absolute fool of yourself. How dare you! Thanks, Cass, she really wasn't taking the hint. That moment, I knew I'd found my people. The next day, while I was concentrating on my math exam, Caroline suddenly showed me something. I'm so sorry. Let's be friends. She wants to make up? Now? Mrs. Harris, she's copying me. What in the world? This shameless liar! I was preparing for the worst when Mrs. Harris said, What's this, Caroline? Her answers are nothing like yours. Not like Danielle needs to cheat off of you. She then gave me back my sheet and dismissed Caroline's. I could see she was still in shock when she walked out. Incredible! Mrs. Harris totally saw through her act. Mrs. Harris was unlike any other teacher at Kingsbury. She was firm, but kind. With her on my side, Caroline didn't bother me anymore. I felt safe confiding in an adult like her. We eventually became more like friends. You like Ian, don't you? I can tell just by looking. There's a carnival in town tomorrow night. That's your chance to make a move. But, Mrs. Harris, curfew. Okay, it didn't sound like a good idea, but I did want to go on a date with Ian, so I texted him and he immediately said yes. Mrs. Harris basically told me to go for it. What could go wrong? I try to quietly leave, but as I stepped into the hallway, Mrs. Bell's flashlight blinded me and boy was she mad. So mad that she dragged me straight to Mr. Hooper's office. This was the second time I came here, which was a lot sooner than I expected. I knew from the start that you would be a problem, Miss Osborne. You have violated the rules time and time again and display a blatant disregard for authority. Sir, aside from tonight, I never intended to break any rule. I promise I've learned from those mistakes and won't be repeating them. They weren't minor offenses, Miss Osborne. Drinking, distributing cheat sheets, infesting your roommate's bed with bugs. Those were what I wrote in the dummy diary. How? We do not allow such delinquency here. In fact, you should be expelled at this very moment. However, out of respect for your parents, you may leave quietly by your own volition. I tried to explain myself, so he gave me three days to come up with evidence in the end. When I got back, I saw my desk drawer ajar, and Cass was asleep. She wouldn't do this. We're friends. But who else? My phone suddenly rang. It's Ian. I didn't want to talk about this over the phone, so I simply explained that someone didn't want me here and promised we'd talk later. I don't want you out either, bestie. Neither do I, Cassie. Not to waste any time, I came up with a plan to sniff out the culprit. This time, I wrote that I was playing a prank on Mrs. Bell. I even set up a silent alarm system with this piece of paper to see if anyone had opened my drawer. The next day, lo and behold, the alarm worked like a charm. They must have taken the bait. Now all there's left to do was... I opened the door to see someone totally unexpected. Now that my plan set in motion, Ian and I hid behind a wall near Mrs. Bell's office. This is an interesting first date. Romantic, isn't it? We suddenly heard footsteps approaching. I peeked around the corner to see Mrs. Harris? I instantly felt my blood boiling. The one person who I trusted betrayed me. I was about to confront her when Ian pulled me back and put one hand over my mouth. Mrs. Harris looked around impatiently, then tried to open the door. As the hinges creaked open, Ian played a loud alarm. Startled, Mrs. Harris tripped and fell. Then Mrs. Bell sprinted towards us. <sighs> What's going on? I arrived just in time to catch these two sneaking around your office. They're playing a prank on you. Are you sure? Because that's not what the camera saw. She's lying. She wrote all about it in her diary. I'm here to catch her in the act. Mrs. Harris, how do you know what I write in my personal diary? I was just messing with my roommate. Are you trying to use them against me? Don't believe a word she says. She's delinquent. Why would she write about sneaking in alcohol if she wasn't thinking of doing it? It's only a matter of time. So, you just make up something if nothing happens, Mrs. Harris? Caroline appeared alongside Mr. Hooper. Mrs. Harris's face turned white at their sight. Caroline then said she accidentally overheard Mrs. Harris tell me to go out after curfew, which was shocking because she'd heard the same before. That's how Caroline was disciplined while her boyfriend was expelled. Recognizing the pattern in Mrs. Harris's behavior, she came to me. We decided to work together to stop this once and for all. Do you care to explain yourself? You really believe these rascals? They just want to make me look bad. That's not me in that video. It's deep fake. By that point, many students had gathered around us. They all came forward to share similar stories about Mrs. Harris. She gained their trust and persuaded them to break school rules. When they're on the verge of expulsion, she blackmailed their parents into paying her lots of money to keep them here. 
At this point, Mrs. Harris had to relent and admitted her wrongdoings. Mr. Hooper summoned me to his office the following day. Miss Osborne, I apologize for misjudging you. I am aghast to learn what Mrs. Harris was doing right under my nose. I may have never known it if it wasn't for yesterday's incident, so thank you. I assure you I'll do whatever it takes to fix the damages she caused. Sir, I don't think Mrs. Harris was the root of the problem. It's Kingsbury's harsh rules. I know you take great pride in them, but rigidity isn't helping. Obedient kids become soft and submissive, while strong-willed ones end up challenging authority. Mrs. Harris took advantage of that. Most students here are exceptional, but their creativity is getting crushed under iron discipline. Mr. Hooper patiently listened to me. In the end, he shook my hand and bid me farewell. A week later, we received an email titled, A Message from the Principal. It contained a video of Mr. Hooper giving a formal apology to the students and families who were victimized by Mrs. Harris, who won't be teaching at any school again. He also acknowledged the problems plaguing our school. Going forward, we will be installing council-based solutions to handle students' problems. Several harsh punishments will be abolished, and mental health services will be available to all. In addition, extracurricular activities will be encouraged. Things really changed for the better. Liveliness had returned to these beautiful hallways. Caroline stopped acting out and started patching things up with her old friend Cass. Now that the dust has settled, I think I'm in love with Kingsbury. And someone, too. We're finally going on our long-awaited date. Why is there a hole here? Could it be that the ants did it? What if they're secretly planning an attack on human beings? Hmm, what will happen to the Big Mac? Elaine, does staring at the hole help you figure out the sphere volume? What class is it? Have you been paying attention at all? Have you? Because if you have, you would have known the answer yourself. Excuse me? Oh, wait. Nah, I still don't know. Sorry, what were you saying? This is going to be in the test. You need to focus if you- Oh, this is Japanese class. Duh. That's it. We're going to the principal's office. And that's the huge of my high school life. Hi, my name's Elaine, and I've been living with ADHD since... I don't know. But of course, ADHD manifests itself differently among different people. For me, I just gotta make sure I take my medication... Wait, where's my birth certificate? Anyway, make sure to like and subscribe before I continue. Right after the principal's office visit, I was walking down the hallway when a hunky guy purposely bumped into me, knocking my bag over. Dude, is that a dinosaur? Are you a kindergartner? <laughs> hey, that's my fidget toy. Give it back. Whoops, finders keepers. Who dares mess with my friend? It's Quinn, the Furious Queen. Run! The two guys immediately ran for their lives. Right then, Skylar and her new boyfriend also headed over. Isn't she the weirdo from the math class? Don't tell me you're friends with her. Yes, I am indeed. You can only choose one, her or me. How about I dump you instead? Get lost. And these are my girls. We've been best friends since forever and always got each other's backs. I forget my stuff a lot and Quinn always makes sure I got everything with me before leaving any place. While Skylar has me covered every time I dozed off in class. You know, I can't sleep at night because I'm busy thinking about the ants' earth destruction plan. Hmm, maybe they're the ones who terminated the giant dinosaurs. Wait, where was I? I don't know. Rewind the video yourself. Valentine's Day soon arrived. Even though Skylar just broke up with her boyfriend, she already had loads of presents from other guys. And so did Quinn. My girls are hot. What about you, Elaine? Nothing this year yet? Nah, I don't care. You guys are all I need. How about you make a move? Any guy you've laid your eyes on? Talk about making a move. When are you going to tell Cromer you've got the biggest crush on him? That's right. Give it a try today, Quinn. I, I don't care. I can get any guy if I want to. Right, suit yourself, girl. That afternoon, we were walking when we heard an announcement from the school's radio station. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Malcolm from iHeartRadio. Today, we got a special request from someone anonymous delivered to Elaine Miller. Love the way you stared at the hole on the desk that day in math class. It was so cute. I wish I could be that hole instead. Happy Valentine's Day. Someone's got a crush on you, Elaine. You've got a secret admirer. See, someone likes you for who you are. Always stay true to yourself. I wonder who this is. OMG, I gotta find out. But didn't you say you don't care? That's right. But now the game has changed. <laughs> who could it be? They mentioned math class, so they must attend the same class as we do. That's it. All we need is the attendance list from Mr. Wilson's office. But we can't go in there. Ever heard of mission I'm possible? 
Girls, it's showtime. After class, we waited for Mr. Wilson to leave his office. Then, just like totally spies, we crawled onto the floor, successfully avoided the security guard's gawking eyes, and managed to hide from one of the teachers passing by, then continued secretly advancing toward Mr. Wilson's office. Oh, look! They got flaming hot Cheetos now! Elaine! After we got the list, I immediately texted a bunch of people to test it out and anxiously waited. But some people replied calling me crazy. Others reported me to Instagram. I even got a visit from the police because they thought I was some creep sliding into people's DMs. Once they left, I immediately FaceTimed the girls. Hmm, from the list, there's still Malcolm you haven't texted. Isn't he working at the radio station with you, Skylar? Yeah, we are working together, but it can't be him. He never asked me about Elaine before. Who knows? You weren't working at the radio station today, were you? My money's on him, Elaine. What should I do? I can't send messages on Instagram anymore. How about writing to him? You know, the old-fashioned way. So I prepared a love letter for Mocha and even designed a cute envelope for it. But then I got too invested in designing the envelope. I forgot all about the letter. When I finally remembered the letter, I walked all the way back for it. But of course, my ADHD brain had to mess it up again. Not until the day when Quinn and Skylar came over and I couldn't find my doctor's envelope anywhere did I realize I'd sent Mocha my ADHD prescription instead of the letter. We immediately flew to Malcolm's house just as the mailman dropped off the prescription envelope out front. Seeing Malcolm walking out, I frantically ran to the other side of the street and started doing the craziest dance to get Malcolm's attention. Suddenly, I tripped and fell flat on my face. Malcolm rushed to help me up and got me inside his house. We chatted a bit as Malcolm worked on my arm. Elaine, right? We share a few classes together. We do? Yeah, you always sit near Quinn and Skylar, right? I saw you snoozing in class sometimes. Um, I guess so. Uh, Look, Malcolm, did you give me the message on the radio? Ah, the confession. Well, it's not me. I'm not your secret admirer. But that doesn't mean I don't have a chance, do I? Skylar talks a lot about you, and I've always wanted to talk to you in person. Um, speaking of Skylar, it's our girls' night tonight. Bye! And thank you. I finally managed to calm my hyperactive heart down when I got back to my room. Is Malcolm the secret admirer? He's not. How embarrassing. See, told you. We're pretty close. He would have told me already. But he seems to like me. Really? I mean, I saw the way he helped you up when you fell. It can't be. Let's focus on finding your real secret admirer. But that doesn't mean I can't hang out with Malcolm while finding my secret admirer. Turned out we both shared a passion for hip hop. He can make super catchy beats for me to rap. Ahem, <laughs> just kidding. Animated story show wouldn't let me. Comment down below if you want a separate video of me rapping. Since then, we started hanging out more often. Malcolm is such a caring and patient person. Sometimes my ADHD kicked in and I cut him off while he was speaking, but he never got mad and just patiently waited for me to finish. Another time when I was blabbing nonstop about whatever was in my mind, I saw him counting. What are you counting for? How many times you switch topics within two minutes? Oh, sorry. No need to. I find it cute, actually. Later on, as we parted ways, I saw Skylar waiting for me, looking a little sad. Hey, what's wrong? I'm gonna be honest with you, because we promised each other. I've actually had a crush on Malcolm ever since we started working together at the radio station. What about your recent boyfriend? Oh, it was just a fling. I just can't stand seeing you with Malcolm. Anyway, don't take it personally. Sorry, I gotta go. Skylar had a crush on Malcolm? But I I do enjoy being with him. No, sisters first. But it wasn't easy, as Malcolm would always try to approach me. It hurt having to stay away from him. Every time he got close, my heart would beat like crazy. But I also don't want to upset Skylar, as she started distancing herself from me and Quinn. I actually quite like Malcolm. This is so complicated. I honestly don't know what to tell you. How about you try finding your secret admirer, for real this time? He might be a better suit than Malcolm. The next morning, I found a note in my locker. From your secret admirer? They want to meet me near the fountain. But when I got there, I saw another note asking me to come to the bleacher. This better not be some silly prank. When I arrived, I was shocked to see Cromer sitting there by himself. He can't be behind the notes, right? Guess I'll find out now. Just a little closer. Closer. Suddenly, he looked up and stared straight into the camera. I was about to run when he caught me. Hey, Elaine Miller, right? You could have asked me for a picture. Didn't know you have a thing for me. No, no, I... I... It was an accident. Since then, I made sure to be more discreet to see if Cromer was the secret admirer. 
But man, it's like this guy got the sixth sense or something. Hey, what's wrong? You look nervous. It's because she likes me. She even tried to take pictures of me, right, Elaine? It's okay. I noticed you watching me recently. Come on, just admit it. I know I'm irresistible. <laughs> Why are you doing this? You know I like him. No, no, let me explain. You know, I even thought it was a misunderstanding between you and Skylar. But you know what? Now it seems like you just want to steal from us. Hey, guys, chill out. What's going on? You chill out. Do you even know Elaine said she liked Malcolm too? And now she's also taking Cromer. My Cromer. Hey, about Cromer, it's not what you think. And Malcolm, it's not like you and him are a thing. I have as much of an equal chance as you do, don't you think? Then why were you following him just then? And you even took pictures of him? And we're talking about our chance with Malcolm now? I, I, you know it's unfair to me. Unfair? We're always trying to make sure to put you first. But now you think you're the victim? I can't do this anymore. I hope you're happy you got both guys now, best friend. That was too much. They acted as if they took pity on me. I don't need anyone to look after me. I'm all fine by myself. Since we fell out, we're all caught up with our own things. Whenever I passed by Skylar, she just gave me a cold look. Quinn also seemed to have found new joys. I managed to get by just fine, but it felt like something was missing. One time, I was walking when I spotted Skylar and Malcolm surrounded by a crowd. Turned out, Skylar confessed having a crush on Malcolm and asked him out, but he rejected her. The crowd couldn't miss the chance to mock her. Suddenly, I remembered how Skylar used to stand up for me, and I felt so bad for her. So, I decided to defend her this time, but she just ran out of there. I tried to catch up with her, but Skylar wouldn't listen. Suddenly, she crossed the street without looking, and a car came crashing into her. I frantically ran to check on her, and we immediately got her to the ER. Thank God she was fine. Just a couple bruises and scratches, but she refused to let me in. That night, I tried to call Quinn, but it kept sending me to voicemail. But I've made up my mind. I kept ringing her bell and insisted on waiting till she showed up. She finally gave in. Hey, I'm sorry for- Oh, you're sorry for me? No need to take pity on me. Just enjoy your happiness. Malcolm rejected me because he chose you. Happy much? Now just leave me alone, you ruthless, self-centered. Then she slammed the door shut in front of me, leaving me all stunned there. Ha, huh, what a show. This should totally be on Netflix. Cromer? Why are you here? I live right next door, so I see Skylar doesn't want to see you, but I do. Get off of me. I never liked you. Are you playing hard to get now, pretty little thing? Right then, Malcolm appeared out of nowhere and bolted to punch Cromer in the face. Didn't you hear what she said? Leave her alone. Can't believe Quinn and I are arguing because of you, creep. If only Quinn knew who her crush truly was. Quinn likes me? Huh. Could have told me earlier. What else is he up to? Anyway, thank you. Why are you here? I heard Skylar got into an accident right after the, uh, incident, so I wanted to pay her a visit. Now that you're here, I just want to let you know. Uh, actually, the one sending you the confession on the radio that day was Skylar. What? She just wanted you to feel loved and not left alone on Valentine's Day. I was going to give it some time before telling you, but things got complicated all too quickly. Anyway, now that you don't have to find out who your secret admirer is anymore, would you want to go out with me? As a girlfriend, I mean. Malcolm, I do like you a lot, but I just can't bring myself to hurting Skylar ever again. I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. I understand. Guess I'll see Skylar another time then. I'm so sorry, Malcolm. Later, I arrived home to mom packing some boxes. Can you check if you still need these from the attic? Otherwise, they have to go. I opened up the boxes to find old pictures of me, Skylar, and Quinn inside, and I immediately burst into tears. We looked so happy together, like nothing could split us apart. That's right. We're sisters. I gotta make things right. The next day, after the first period, I came looking for Skylar. Gosh, I'm so anxious. Where's my fidget toy? What if Skylar's still mad at me? Looking for this? Y yes Skylar, I need to talk- Me too. I'm sorry, Elaine. Ugh, I was so hurt and embarrassed yesterday that I said nasty things to you. And you were right. I should have told you earlier I have a crush on Malcolm. But after everything, I realized how stupid I was and I don't want to lose you or lose us. Hey, me too. I couldn't sleep yesterday after hearing about everything from Skylar. I haven't been myself without you guys. Oh, me neither. You guys mean the world to me. It turned out Skylar also gave me the locker notes that day. 
She said she wanted me to give up on finding the secret admirer, and Cromer just happened to be there. After that, I also told Quinn and Skylar about the fight between Cromer and Malcolm that night when Cromer himself showed up. Hey, Quinn, I just realized I've always liked you. I'm sorry your friend Elaine liked me, but you are my perfect match. Be my girlfriend, will you? Skylar and I immediately gave each other a worried look when, Cromer, you know what Lady Gaga would say? Caught in a bad romance? I know I'm too handsome. You can't resist. She'd say, Women stick together, you jerk. Cromer immediately ran away in embarrassment. <laughs> what a loser. Oh, by the way, Malcolm left to study abroad today and he sent his goodbye to you. I feel so bad about you and Malcolm. It's okay. Right person, wrong time. From then on, us three were always by each other's side and graduated together. We even went to the same college now and made sure we go to every party together. One night at a music festival, I was waiting for Skylar and Quinn to get back from the restroom when they started playing Kendrick Lamar. Hip-hop would always remind me of someone now. Suddenly, a handkerchief was handed to me. I saw you from afar. Is this the right time to get your number now? Bonjour. I'm Chloe, and I live here in the French city of Toulouse. I'm working on my debut romance novel about a couple destined to be together despite all the hurdles they face. If you like the sound of it, then leave a comment. Boo! <laughs> Lost in your dumb fictional world again? If you like the sound of it, then leave a comment. <laughs> That's Cedric, my brother. But I doubt it, because we have nothing in common. And he's a massive pain in my... Uh -huh. Anyway... I guess you could say I'm introverted, and I dream of becoming a best-selling romance novelist, making a living out of doing what I love. Only, dreams don't always go to plan, and publishing houses don't seem to like my drafts. Meanwhile, Cedric is Satan in disguise, whose sole purpose is making my life miserable. He turned off my alarm and made me late for a meeting, changed all of my contacts' names to emojis, and one time, I woke up to see my laptop covered all in plastic wrap. The problem was he got away with being a jerk simply because he was deemed good-looking. In his fangirl's eyes, he could do no wrong. Living with Cedric was such an endurance test, so I avoided him the best I could by going to a private school, instead of the same public school as him. Everything was fine, until our parents lost everything in stocks, and we had no choice but to move into this teeny, tiny house. One night, I went downstairs to get some water and saw Mom and Dad up late with bills piled up around them. Seeing them like that made me desperately want to help. So the next day, I told them that the public school had a creative writing club and that I wanted to transfer there. My tuition fees weren't a burden anymore, but going to the same school as Cedric was not ideal. So I insisted that he acted like he didn't know me at all. Still, the first few days were terrible as I kept getting lost and felt so out of place. I hardly looked up and only identified other students by their shoes. Thank goodness for the pink and white sneaker girl, Emma. She was the only person who actually noticed me, and when I told her about my writing dreams, she was really supportive. We became best friends and could chat about everything, even my annoying brother. Things were better at school, but not at home. My parents were still struggling to hide their money problems, and Cedric, well, was just being Cedric. Couldn't he see that now wasn't the time for his clown antics? I helped out as much as I could by cleaning, doing laundry, preparing meals and even got a part-time job in a patisserie, while he literally did nothing. Why can't you stop fooling around? Chill out, sis. Even when you have a mare, all the stress will give you gray hair. Fine, act like a moron and stay in this moronic place forever. I'll get our old house back alone. After a busy shift, I just wanted to get home and go straight to bed. Only when walking along the curb, I spotted Cedric doing some dumb, noisy performance. Ugh. Such a laughable, selfish bum. I had to seriously hold back or else my fist would definitely land on his face. Oh, I still had the last chapter to finish. My body was ready to shut down, but I couldn't slack. Not if I wanted to complete it by Louis Beaumont's book launch. He's my favorite author. I'd planned for months to fly to Nice and hand him my manuscript. Suddenly, the lights went out. Guys, looks like the electricity company cut us off because of those unpaid bills. Gosh, we can't live like this. So I pulled out some money from the back of the manuscript. This was money for my niece trip. But this is more urgent. So I gotta do what I have to do. Mom, Dad, here's some money. Just to help out a bit. The next day, Cedric barged into my room with a smug grin on his face. Guess who's going to Paris? Try not to miss me too much, will ya? What? B but where did you get your money from? Mom and Dad? Duh. Check it out. 
That's my money? I can't believe this. We don't even have electricity, but they gave him money to go mess around in Paris? I shoved him out of my room and slammed the door shut. I'd always tried my best to not disappoint them, yet they favored my deadbeat brother and spoiled him rotten. All this family stuff was eating me up, so on school day, I confided in Emma. Only when I tried talking to her, she seemed distracted and kept drifting with the music. Em, Em, are you listening? Oh, sorry, but this beat is straight up fire. Look, he's the winner of this contest. Isn't he amazing and talented? I looked at her phone and saw, what? Cedric? So he came to Paris for this stupid contest? Don't talk about him, okay? That's my selfish, uncaring brother I've always talked about. Be his fan, and we can't be friends anymore. Things got even worse when Cedric went home and literally made it rain with his reward money. Chloe, look at all of this money your brother won. Thanks to his talent, we can go back to our old house. Ugh, why is everything so easy for Cedric? He did some nonsense rap and became a celebrity? Meanwhile, it's me who had to give up my trip, my dream. At least we got the old house back, but day after day, these annoying reporters are driving me crazy. How did you come up with meaningful lyrics? Meaningful? Everyone knows rap isn't actually music. It's just some noise full of swearing and insults. Yeah, ignore her. She's just cranky from skipping breakfast. There's no escaping Cedric's name, not even at school. Please, please, please introduce me to him. Why are you so obsessed with him? Don't you remember anything I said about how terrible he is? Come on, give his music a try. I can't believe someone who wrote such beautiful lyrics can be as bad as you say he is. Fine. If she wanted to meet him, then I'd grant her that wish. It's about time she saw his true face. I opened the door and showed Emma inside when suddenly we were covered in a cloud of confetti. Why the long face? My grand welcome was the bomb. Do you know how long it would take to clean this mess? Ugh, Em, this is my brother. An idiot. Idiot brother. Em. But then I turned around to see Emma already soaking up Cedric's every word. I can't take this anymore. My time would be better spent writing. Trembling thoughts through fear. Your eyes will find mine. Love will bind us like a cat's nine lives. Wow, that's perfect. Wait, that voice sounds unfamiliar. Oh my, this guy was heartthrob-level handsome. Bonjour, I'm Pierre, Cedric's colleague. Is he home? Yes, let me show you the way. What are you seeking him for? We're collaborating on my next album, so I'm here to practice. As a senior singer, I also helped Cedric build his show and industry connections. He's superb, isn't he? After that day, Pierre visited my house more often. Turns out he's a sweet and gentle guy who always brought us gifts, such as flowers and scented candles. And after dinner, he even helped me wash up. How can such an angel work with my devil brother? One day when I was out with Emma, suddenly she looped her arm around me and said, You sure seem chirper these days. It's probably because Cedric's often away on music shows. You're telling me it has nothing to do with Pierre? Come on, Chloe, it's written all over your face. Fine, he's really sweet and his smile is as bright as the sun. How can I approach someone like him? Hmm, why not start with a love letter? I took Emma's advice and wrote the most romantic letter ever, then brought it to his company. If anyone asks, I'll say I'm here to see my brother. Huh? Are they arguing? I went over to Pierre and asked him what had happened. Oh, it's nothing really. Cedric is just stressed out from his busy schedule. Yeah, right. As if there was anything stressful about this nonsense rap thing. Now is my moment, so I stuffed the letter in Pierre's hand, then ran away. I was still giddy with excitement when I arrived home. Only Cedric ruined my mood by sitting there looking like he'd swallowed a wasp. Oh no, are all showbiz parties too tiring? What a tragedy. Shut it, Chloe. What does a dreamer like you know? Dreamer? At least I'm not a self-centered, shallow idiot. I sacrificed everything so you could go after your dumb rap career. And all you do is act like an ungrateful jerk. Grow up and stop being so childish. I expected him to shout back at me, but instead he gave me this dead look, then trudged off to his room. He didn't come down for dinner or anything for the next three days. Hmm, this house sure was quiet without him. But he's a chill guy and things will go back to normal soon, right? I guess I should just enjoy the peace while I could. The next day, Emma showed up at my house all worked up. Is Cedric here? He didn't answer any texts and calls. Huh? You two are messaging each other? Uh, um, I just wonder if he's okay. How typical of you to talk to him behind my back. 
to my surprise, Emma just impatiently barred past me and ran up to Cedric's room. Then she reappeared with a note. Cedric's gone! Jeez, how irresponsible and impulsive. He really doesn't care about anyone but himself. Enough! I won't listen to you badmouth your brother anymore! Can't you see he's seriously struggling and showing signs of depression? Who's the one who doesn't care about family here? And you really believe you're better than him? Emma's outburst left me stunned. Is Cedric really depressed? How was I meant to know that when he's always goofing around? That evening, Mom and Dad kept fretting about Cedric's disappearance. He gave his all to help us while we could do nothing to help him. Remember those days he performed on the streets? He gave us all the money he earned, and he always tried to cheer us up when things were down. Cedric only wanted to join the rap contest to win some more money. He was very nervous, but we believed in him, so we gave him the money to enter. Oh God, so I misunderstood him all along? Suddenly, I remembered his winning track that Emma insisted that I listen to. I went up to my room and turned it on. It's about us, his beloved family. Turns out he wasn't a deadbeat, idle loser like I thought he was. He always puts on a happy face to lift other spirits while quietly struggling with his own demons. I needed to find him and apologize immediately, so I went to Pierre for help. I had no idea he was struggling so badly. I should have noticed that he was suffering and not overloaded him with work. But there's an important show coming. If Cedric was a no-show, he'd be in breach of his contract and have to pay a huge sum in compensation. Oh no, that's not good. What should we do now? You know what? You look a lot like Cedric. How about you disguise as him? But how? Don't worry, our makeup team is top-notch. Nobody's gonna know. This all sounded crazy, but it seemed like I had no other choice. My family couldn't be in debt again for this. Being this close to Pierre made my heart flutter. He took me for my makeover, then I learned to lip-sync and perform on stage. I even tried to walk and talk like my brother. I felt bad about deceiving his fans, but I couldn't risk Cedric getting into big trouble. It's only a one-time thing. Sometimes I lip-sync too. It's no big deal. I felt a bit confused. Then suddenly, a stage crew member above me accidentally dropped a wrench. It could have knocked me off if Pierre didn't swoop in and save the day. Now, back to practicing, and oh boy, was it hectic. Pierre stayed with me the whole time and was really supportive. We also never stopped trying to look for Cedric together. I felt our connection growing, but couldn't figure out why he hadn't made any move. Maybe my first letter hadn't been clear enough, so I sneaked into Pierre's room and left him another one. Only later that day, I saw him glued to his phone, so I took a glance. Huh? He was messaging somebody with a very cheesy nickname. Right, he wasn't interested because he was already dating someone else. Oh no, I have to reclaim my second letter before humiliating myself. I ran into his room but couldn't find it anywhere. Wait, what's this? Here comes the big night. I was absolutely terrified. Pierre smiled sweetly at me and held my hands. We shared a look, then stepped on stage together. There were so many people out there. My legs felt numb, but then I spotted Emma beaming at me from the front row, and my nerves eased again. I quickly found the beat, then lip-synced and danced perfectly. But halfway through the song, the stage light suddenly went off and a shadowy figure walked toward me. Cedric! The audience oohed and awed, then clapped in excitement as Cedric continued the rest of the performance. During the break, everyone went backstage and saw Pierre grab Cedric's arm. Cedric, where have you been? We've all been worried sick. Drop the act. You're just using me to make yourself rich, forcing me to do show after show, and when I was exhausted, you pushed lip syncing onto me. What are you talking about? These shows are to help you gain support. Starting out in this industry is hard. Hey, I even lent you some money to get your house back. You mean the money you used to tie my brother in with a stupid contract? You compelled Cedric to work exclusively with you, performing two years for free to clear his debt. But according to these receipts for each show, the money he should have received already exceeded the amount he owed you. W what the? Surprised much? Now we have all the evidence against you. So what? Cedric signed it anyway. A contract is a contract. Break it and I'll get you kicked out of the company and make sure you never get any show again. Your whole family will be dirt poor alike before. I don't think so. What would the public say if they knew you've been flirting with him all along, and when he rejected you, you manipulated and overworked him until he agreed to date you? Uh, how long have you known? Long enough to expose you. Now, you have two options. One, cancel the contract within the next 24 hours and pay my brother the excess money you exploited from him. Or two, we'll publish what you did and see if you survive in showbiz afterward. I don't hate you for having feelings for me, but this deal is not fair. 
Pierre looked nervous and angry, then just stormed off. I turned to my annoying, goofy brother and gave him a big hug. I'm sorry for misunderstanding you before. Why didn't you tell us that you borrowed money to get back our house? I know how much you wanted our house back, so I joined the contest, but the prize money wasn't enough. That's when I asked Pierre. Silly me. If you hadn't found the contract and receipts, I would have still believed his lies and worked till exhaustion. So you did get my message. I was about to shut off all connections to the world. But that day I felt super uneasy, so I opened my phone and saw your message. Must be sibling telepathy. One more thing. Emma, you truly helped me find myself again. What do you say? Do you want to be a superstar rapper's girlfriend? Yes, I do. Please keep the lovey-dovey stuff to a minimum in front of me. Luckily, I was spared when a stage crew called Cedric to go back on stage. You know, it's not easy for us artists to have a big platform, literally like the stage. We always have a price to pay for the glory. Because of that, I'm eternally grateful for my amazing family and friends who always have my back. And a big shout out to my sister for being my inspiration for this song. Then he started rapping to my poetry. His rhymes and my poems are flowing, really getting the crowd going. He's a lyrical gymnastic genius. After the show, Cedric received a video from Pierre. Cedric, I'm sorry for taking advantage of you. I like you so much and wanted to keep you close. I'll pay back what I owe you, then take a break from showbiz for a while. I really hope one day you can forgive me. Phew, all that drama was a lot for my introverted self to handle. So now I've treated myself to some me time to recharge. Thanks to Cedric rapping, dozens of my publishers reached out to me for my poems, including those who'd previously rejected me. <sighs> Gosh, am I seeing it wrong? A mail from Louis Beaumont himself? I can't wait to see him in person. And you keep working on your dream. Perhaps a secret angel is on the way to bring you a wonderful opportunity. It's only 6 a.m., but Dad already woke me up. Hurry up, LaDonna. A huge storm's coming. Poor households away the city's plan for food and shelter. Oh, then what's the mayor's plan for my food? But Dad didn't listen and just drove away without letting me have breakfast. Well, I'm used to this anyway. A little backstory. We came from a long line of politicians. My grandpa, my uncles, all worked for the government. My dad actually broke with tradition and became a successful businessman. But I guess the apple really can't fall far from the tree. Last year, he took a sudden U-turn and moved back to his hometown to pursue a political career. And he was elected mayor! Since then, he had no time left for me. Not to mention the judgy eyes I had to face at school. You look fine. It's not you. It's your dad's new policy they're whispering about. Don't mind them, LaDonna. What do us kids know about politics anyway? Here they are, Kira and Troy, my only friends here. In fact, Troy's even in a similar situation. His mom is the chief of police, but he deals with it pretty well. Have you been to the White House? Does the key to the city really open anything? Can you tell your dad to ban homework? Seriously, how could Troy stay calm before these stupid questions? And even the teachers wouldn't leave me alone. They always put me in charge of things. Please, just because my dad has great leadership doesn't mean I do too, as if I wasn't already swamped with chores. Once the last bell rang, I rushed to the grocery store. Since dad's always busy now, poor old me had to take up housework and it's frozen meals all day every day. But today he'd come home early for dinner, so I'm gonna throw a feast. Except, none of these tasted edible. What's the problem? I followed the recipes very carefully. Did I come home at the wrong time? No, Dad. A perfect timing. My apple pie's ready. You mean that smoking thing in the oven? Oh, no. My only ray of hope has also turned to ashes. I immediately ran to the convenience store, grabbed all of the instant foods, and dashed home. But Dad's already fallen asleep. He must be exhausted. It's always been him who raised me, as Mom passed away giving birth to me. Now on top of that, he had to take care of this whole town. He needed a partner to share his burden, and I needed to be taken care of as well. Let's see, getting to know someone new with Dad's hectic schedule would be impossible, so maybe reconnect him with one of his exes? From my aunt, I learned he had two ex-girlfriends. One is Jade, his old classmate who's still single. Two is Alva. No other information. Let's start with Jade then. Next day, I immediately told Troy and Kira about my master plan. That's my Aunt Jade. No way! It's faded! Suddenly, a group rushed towards us, babbling about my uncle being appointed temporary secretary of state. Jeez, chill, guys! They kept flocking around, making me feel suffocated. Panicked, I ran away, and as I turned the corner, a hand pulled me back. 
calm down. You're safe from that crazy crowd now. Thanks, but why did you help me? I've been in your position. I know what you're going through. Just like that, I found myself comfortably venting everything to her. It must be hard for your family of two. That's why I'm finding him a wife. Oh, good luck to you then, sweetie. I have to go now. What a lovely lady. If only everyone could be like her. With Kira's help, setting up a date for Dad and Jade was a piece of cake. We both dragged them to the same restaurant, then cued some cliché matchmaking moments. Me and Kira quickly excused ourselves and monitored things from afar. They seemed to have a good time, but as we leaned closer... Huh? Inflation? Food security? Obesity epidemic? They'd been chatting about politics this whole time? Dad! That's exactly why you're single! <sighs> On the way home, I constantly mentioned Jade, but Dad was nonchalant and switched the subject to his meeting instead. Ugh. Another one in 30 minutes. I'll have to stay home alone tonight. As he dropped me off, he added, Find yourself a boyfriend first before trying to set me up. <laughs> How annoying! I then called Kira to inform her that our matchmaking plan had failed, but it took her a while to accept it. You give up too soon. Is it because you don't like my aunt? No, Kira, it's because I know my dad. And if he said no, it's a no. Okay, now plan B. Alva. I did some digging and figured out the neighborhood where she lived. I'll go there tomorrow. So, here I am now, completely lost. Except, isn't that the woman who helped me at school? I rushed over and thanked her for the other day, but she seemed a little off. After a lot of persuading, she finally told me the cause of her sorrow. A tragic love story. His family are all politicians, so they can't accept someone mediocre like me. I'm so sorry, but I'm sure you can find someone better. She shook her head, saying he'd recently moved back to town and was still single. That got her reminiscing about the good old days. But sadly, he's seeing someone else. <laughs> Wait a sec. Is that a photo of you two? May I see? She showed it to me. My thought exactly. That's my dad. So you're Alva? Yes, but how do you know? Because you're my dad's ex. Just who I'm looking for. I shrieked in happiness. But strangely, she cried even harder, then hugged me. If that's your dad, then LaDonna... I'm not just his ex. I'm your mom. Hold up. What now? So, they were deeply in love despite my dad's family's disapproval. But when I was born, they got even angrier and kicked her out. Yet, this entire time, I thought my poor mom was no longer on this earth. Our reunion was cut short by dad's call. I wanted to ask him everything ASAP, but mom signaled me not to. Honey, don't tell Robert yet. Of course I look forward to our family's reunion, but I'm not ready to meet him. And perhaps neither is he. It'll be awkward for him and the woman he's seeing. No worries, Mom. There's nothing between them. The only woman for him is you. Having Mom beside me made my life so much better. She's a successful businesswoman, but still puts work aside to spend time with me. We went on picnics, shopping, watched movies together. And her cooking is the best. I devoured the grilled ribs in an instant. It's a thousand times better than frozen food. When I'm around her, I can be myself without worrying about the public's eye. I wish I could skip class every day to stay home with mom like this, but it's not that easy. At school, I excitedly told Kira and Troy all about my fun outings with mom, but they looked rather uninterested. Whatever, mom will pick me up later and we'll have a blast. Suddenly, buzzing talks from other tables cut off my thoughts. My cat eats faster than her. Indeed, our graceful princess. Guys, don't be fooled. She's in fact a delinquent who skips class all the time. Having a mare daddy is so lucky. If we did that, we'd be kicked out right away. Those mean girls always have something bad to say. I headed toward them to settle this once and for all, but my father's words echoed in my mind. LaDonna, everyone judges me by your behavior. Ugh, fine. They're right, LaDonna. You've been absent quite a lot lately. I, I just want to be around my mother. A good mom would never tell her daughter to skip class. Think about it. There must be a reason for your whole family to be against her. What do you know? They were the bad guys who unreasonably looked down on her. Then why did your dad keep in touch with my aunt, but cut ties with her? So, Kira was still annoyed that my dad and her aunt didn't become a thing? How petty. I walked off, but Troy ran after me. Kira's just worried about you. Also, you're living in the same town as your mom now. You'll have lots of time with her. So don't play truant again, okay? Here, I've marked the important parts we learned during your absence. Troy has always been gentle to me. He's right. I have tons of time for mom, but we can't keep sneaking around like this. My parents should reunite soon. I remembered the story of how my mom first met dad and got an idea. What's so important that you have to come here in this weather? I promise to help out a friend. 
please pull over here and wait for me? The friend I was helping was none other than mom. I then waited a bit before telling dad to bring me an umbrella because it's raining too hard. Now it's your turn. Go get him, mom. And just like that, the romantic scene from many years ago was reenacted right before my eyes. My mom was soaking wet, dashed through the rain, then bumped into my father. My dad then bent down to help her up, looked right into her eyes, and dropped her on the ground? I was still in shock when dad charged towards me and dragged me back to the car. How did you know that woman? Um, I asked around. Just stop. Never see her again, got it? His extreme reaction was proof that mom really mattered. They'll definitely get back together soon because they had me, their special bond. That night, I called mom. She must have been really upset. It's all right, honey. I'm used to it. Your dad's family was... Never mind. Your birthday's coming. LaDonna, what do you want for a present? I just want you to be with me. Yes, sweetie. If only we could celebrate as a family. That's it! I insisted dad throw me a huge birthday party. I invited all my friends and acquaintances. When the party began, I stepped on stage and thanked everyone for coming. Lastly, the biggest thanks goes to the people who brought me into this world. Dad, Mom, please join me. I believe you all know my father already, but my mother, Alva Garrix. The crowd began talking and pointing. Now Dad has to acknowledge her. Please, it's a misunderstanding. Miss Garrix here is only an old friend, and it seems she got along very well with my daughter, which is just adorable. <laughs> Let's toast to our little princess's birthday. Unbelievable! He's fully committed to disregarding her. As the guests were busy chatting, Dad pulled me into a room. Ugh, he doesn't have the right to be mad here. Old friend, you're straight up lying. Elva is my mother. No, she's a gold digger. Look, there's no time right now. When do you ever have time for me? Dad just sighed, apologized, then sat me down to tell me that back when he first started his business, it failed, but he didn't want to ask his family for help. Mom berated him, saying he was a dumb loser who wouldn't take advantage of his family's power. Unable to change his mind, Mom left after I was born. No, no, that's not it. I'm sorry, Robert. I shouldn't have shown up here. It's all my fault. I... She suddenly passed out. Panicked, Dad and I put her in bed. That night, I checked on Mom constantly, then fell asleep next to her. I was awoken by my phone's notifications, so I quickly went out to check to not wake Mom. Oh my... Hundreds of articles about my dad came up. His old photos with Jade and with my mother were all over the news. The press was saying that he's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Dad's bombarded with calls from dozens of news outlets. It's her. Only Elva has these photos. Dad, look. How could such a frail person do anything? Suddenly, I saw a figure at the door to Mom's room. Dad and I tiptoed over, then grabbed them. Aha! Gotcha! Huh? Kira? Kira claimed that my mom's very suspicious, so she had to keep an eye on her. I swear she's faking it. I heard her on the phone just now. Enough, Kira. You're out of line this time. I don't want such a petty friend. Leave. Kira didn't say another word and just left. So did my dad. The protest at 4th Street is still going strong. All right, I'm coming. It's always work, work, work. Do these strangers matter more to him than his wife and kid? The next day, Troy asked me to meet up at the park for some update. So, I unloaded everything onto him. I can't believe my dad rejected mom just to save face like that. He's not making as much money as when he had his business. Why is he so dead set on this job? I used to think like that about my mom too, but then I realized that she wasn't doing her job for money or fame, but simply contributing to society. I now entirely support her, because it's her life's purpose. It might be the same for your dad. What Troy said lingered in my mind. It does make sense. If dad's all about glory, there's many other ways which don't require him bending over backwards day in and day out like this. Troy's always been understanding to his mom. And me? I've never been supportive of dad when he had to juggle between his job and me. When I got home, mom was nowhere to be seen, except a letter on the table. Mom said she's terminally ill and didn't have much longer. That's why she risked everything to be with me. But now her health worsened. She didn't want me to witness her pitiful condition, so she left. I immediately called her. It's dangerous in this abandoned construction site. Please don't come. I just need you to know I love you, LaDonna. I immediately knew where she was when she said that. I rushed over, but at the entrance, a scary-looking crew approached me. Don't worry, sweetie. They're our friends. Just listen to them. They wasted no time tying me up, then called Dad. As soon as he arrived, Mom dropped her act. Turned out, she planned to approach me right after knowing he was elected mayor. Her wish to rekindle with us was just to use dad, but it didn't work on him, so she's pushing things this far. 
Sign here, and our daughter will be safe. Many people will go bankrupt if that's signed. Don't ever think you could fool me. You couldn't care less about your daughter. Or are you still counting on those useless cops? Ma'am, you underestimate our law enforcers. It's Troy and Kira, followed by undercover policemen coming from all directions. Turns out, Kira actually heard the calls Alva made to her accomplices. She then told Troy and asked his mom to look into Alva. Coincidentally, the police had always been after Alva because she's been involved in a scheme that gave tenants a ridiculously huge debt. She colluded with the former mayor and wanted to continue the scam with my dad now. Before she's taken away, Alva still cried and begged for my help. I was nothing more than a puppet to you, and now you're talking about maternal love? A scammer like you deserves to be brought to justice. After Alva's arrest, I broke down crying. She's my mother. That's the only truth among all those lies. Dad hugged me and said sorry for everything. It's all my fault. I just foolishly fell into her trap because I wanted someone to take care of us. I'm sorry, LaDonna. You went through so much because of me and my job. It's okay, Dad. Now I see how meaningful your work is. I'm proud to be your daughter. And you too. Thank you. I decided to sign up for a cooking class to better support Dad. And this banquet is the fruits of my hard work. But before he could even sit down, an emergency call came. He gave me a sorry look, but I gladly said, Bye, Dad. I'll save you some. I was a little bummed out. But it's his job after all. And if he can't be changed, why not learn to enjoy it? Moments later, these hungry hippos already came. But hey, this just came to my mind. How about Troy's mom? She's also single and would look great with your dad, right? Nah, I've realized he already has a love of his life, serving the community. He's very happy with his choice. So I'll leave him be, for now. That's right. Besides, we can't be family. At least, not yet.